Western Division. The strength of the Blue Jays, of course, will be their starting pitching. Mosby should improve a lot this year, along with Barfield, Willie Upshaw. The question mark, the bullpen. It'll go as far as the bullpen will take them. All Nelson and Adam wanted from spring break was a good time. Nelson, wherever you look, skin, skin, skin. What they got was an adventure. They got trouble. They got kidnapped. It's a real fair, real fair. Two against one, right? I'm wearing a towel. But eventually, they got just what they wanted. I still don't know where my underpants are. Why, what happened to them? I think they ate them. Held over at the Capital Number One Kitchener, the Stratford Drive-In and the Sunset Drive-In Cambridge. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge with the all-new S10 Blazer. Available with a revolutionary InstaTrack four-wheel drive system. Ship from freewheeling two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high and back at any speed. Try that with any other four-wheel drive system, import or domestic. Taking charge with the most fuel-efficient V6 power available. S10 Blazer. No wonder they're calling it 4x4 Truck of the Year. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge. Out. Yeah, come on, boys. We're moving out of here. We deserve a break now. Hey, really glad you're here. <laughs> Me and the boys are Smooth, easy drinking 50. What a beer to share. Me and the boys and our beer. I wonder how you react to all the things being said about your ball club this spring. How strong they are. In fact, people like Dick Hauser, Dick Young saying 1-2 in the American League East. What's your reaction to it? It's fine with me. I'm glad they're picking us there, uh, Don. And uh, I like our ball club a great deal. And I've said all winter long, we won 78 last year. And if we can squeeze out another 12 somehow, sometimes those 12 wins are hard to come by. I hope everybody understands that. But that would put us in definite contention at uh, 90 wins. So. I think some of the writers uh, like our ball club a great deal. Uh, Dick Young, I know, has his pick behind uh, Baltimore, I believe, for a second-place finish, and he's seen us play uh, last year in New York, and uh, it is a good ball club right now. Now, with a young ball club, what happens when they read about this kind of prediction? Uh, does it help them with confidence, or maybe is there a danger of getting them into a situation where they maybe lay back a little bit and say, hey, we got to make well, we had a meeting this morning, and I uh, read some of those articles to him when we talked about it, and I told him this, that it doesn't make any difference what everybody else in the world thinks or what I think. It's how we play. You know, they can pick us for first or whatever they want to, but we're not going to finish first unless we play well. So that's what we have to keep in mind, play within our own little ball game, so to speak, and uh, keep an even keel on things and uh, take them one at a time, and I think our ball is going to be okay. Well, the tough part for you is the fact the rest of the division is also improving, right? It's a real good division. Uh, the American League East is perhaps the best division in all of baseball. And there is Bobby Cox at home plate, welcoming the starting lineup for the Toronto Blue Jays here on opening day of 1983. Thomas Garcia. Dave Collins, the potential to steal 100 bases or more between them in the one and two spots. Willie Upshot, first base, standing next to him. And a newcomer for the Blue Jays in 83, the DH, Big Cliff Johnson, wired from the Oakland A's for Elvis Woods. And as you may have read and heard, Elvis last week was released outright by the Oakland Ball Club. Here's Jesse Barfield. They look for big things from Jesse. In the outfield, a very good outfield for the Blue Jays, at least loaded with potential. There's Ernie Witt, the catcher. Lloyd Mosby, you talk about potential unrealized last year. There's a lot of pressure on Lloyd to come through in 83 for this team at center field. Mononex will play at third base. Rance Mononex and still at shortstop, despite the presence of training camp of Tony Fernandez is Alfredo Griffin. They can't bump him out of there. Fernandez back down to the minor leagues, and Alfredo and the Blue Jays look loose. They look ready. They were here. Three hours ago, Tony, ready to go right there to start the season. It'll be interesting to see as the rest of the contingent of the Blue Jays takes the field. A lot of ifs in the Eastern Division, American League. 
if Boston gets starting pitching, if Detroit gets some bullpen help, if Baltimore's pitching staff is healthy, now they will introduce individually all of the Red Sox players, coaches, and managers. Ralph Houck. And when a former Yankee gets this kind of hand in a Boston Red Sox uniform, it'll tell you how popular Houck is. Wade Bonds playing third base, leading off. Bonds will be leading off in place of Jerry Remy, who has some muscle spasms in his back. White Evans, popular figure here in Boston, hard-hitting outfielder. They are not booing, they are saying Dewey, which is his nickname up here in the Boston area. Here's Rice. That's two-thirds out of what many describe as the best outfield in all of baseball. The third is Tony Armas, acquired from Oakland. Here's Tony. You are looking at some home run power. Listen to this now for the 22nd opening day for Kyle Ustremski. He's missed only one, and it's a standing ovation for Yaz. The last opening day for him. He'll retire after 23 years in September. Cheering Yastrzemski here at Fenway. And here is the media guy in the back. Three pictures of Yastrzemski, and at the bottom of it says, the end of an era. It's incredible, Don. Yastrzemski, when he first broke in, was booed mercilessly for the first several years of his career because he replaced a man named Ted Williams. They won't stop, will they? They love him. His only opening day that he missed was an 81 with muscle spasms in the back. He has a 326 lifetime average on opening day. Now it's Dave Stapleton who lit behind Yaz playing at first base. Catcher is Rich Gedman. Hoffman is the shortstop. Valdez. Valdez, he'll play for Jerry Remy, who's on the disabled list for 15 days to start the season at second base. A switch hitter with some speed. And today's starter, Dennis Eckersley. Still warming for the Red Sox in the right field bullpen. A lot of outfield depth on this Boston club. Rick Miller coming out now, who won a gold glove as a center fielder with the Angels. Took over Freddie Lynn's job, and now he's a reserve with the outfield the Sox have with Jim Rice, and, uh, Tony Armas, Dwight Evans. Johnny Pesky, part of those great Red Sox teams. A little ill during the offseason, lost some weights, but he's back out hitting fungos. Rookie Mike Barrett. Infielder. And Bob Ojeda, who threw the ball very well this spring, a left-handed pitcher. Eddie Jurak, an infielder. J-U-R-A-K. Comes the big man out of the bullpen, and one of them, Mark Clear, short reliever. Former California Angel. There's a rookie, Mike Brown, who was broken into the starting staff, a youngster with the number three starter for Ralph Hawks Red Sox. They say he's been pitching with the poise of a man 30 years of age. John Tudor, left-hander, had a rough spring. Tommy Harper, one season with Milwaukee, 30 home runs and 30 stolen bases. Tudor, by the way, will start the second game of this series Thursday against Luis Real. Well, the bullpen, a big question for the Red Sox, as well as the Blue Jays and a lot of other clubs, Tony. They're introducing uh, 
couple of the other catchers down in the bullpen. Lee Stang, the pitching coach, down there with Eckersley. And Gary Allenson. Eddie Yost, the walking man. Seven or eight seasons he walked 100 plus times. Eddie Yost is quite a story. His on base percentage career is better than Pete Rose's. Lisa Conte. Here comes Stanley right to Ralph Hawk and home plate. Look at this. <laughs> He, right set a record. he set a record last year for any pitch out of the bullpen. He is one of the best in the game, whether he wets him up or not. John Henry Johnson, he'll be the left-hander down in the minor leagues last year. Take the place of Bergmeier, who has left the ball club for Oakland. Reed Nichols now being introduced, an excellent center fielder who will be a DH defensively. Center field will DH against left-handed pitchers. Charlie Moss, the trainer. Seven new faces on the Red Sox in 83. This is Vincent Orlando, who is the home clubhouse man that was a personal, very intimate friend of Babe Ruth. He's been around a long, long time, over 50 years. Vince Orlando. The man right there used to play when the late owner, Tom Yawkey, his wife's still part owner, used to play pepper with Mr. Yawkey every day for a ball game. Now here comes the color guard down. The Harvard band, Harvard, as they say, Harvard, here, Harvard. To play the two national anthems. Don't forget, big opening ceremonies in Toronto on Saturday for the Yankees when they come in. Jonathan, Jonathan Keene, Keen. that's a young man who cut that uh, screamer, fractured his skull last August the 8th, and everybody was cheering for him. Jim Rice, you recall, carried him off the field. Well, young fellow's back in good shape, and here to throw out the opening ball on opening day at Fenway Park. Jonathan's ready when they give him the go-ahead. <laughs> Cross the seams fastball, Jonathan, that a boy. Well, Yastrzemski's father uh, is supposed to throw out one of the balls today, too, isn't he? I think so. Kind of a double-barrel ceremony. Lee McPhail, the league president, commissioner, and Mrs. Louis Kuhn are here. And there is not an empty seat in the house at Fenway. They will draw their two million plus year in the ballpark that seats a little bit over 30,000 people. Here are the anthems now.
glorious day on which to start the 83 baseball season for the Blue Jays and the Red Sox here at Fenway Park in Boston. This is Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on ZTV. Look out, Mars! I'm back! Okay, Mr. Stringbean. Handle that. Now, what is this? Best there is, Moose. Taught him everything I know. We'll see. The job's done, Moose. All right, all right. You did good. Had me a good teacher. You got any more wagons you want fixed? Blame top guns. I'm gonna get him. There's the umpiring crew, the crew chief at home plate, Larry Barnett, Dale Ford, Ken Kaiser, and Rocky Rowe around the base paths. And I'll tell you, this weather isn't very much different from what these teams experienced in Florida. Not a great winter season down there. And up here, reaching into the low 60s at Fenway Park this afternoon under partly cloudy skies. Man behind home plate in today's ballgame, Larry Barnett. And the baseball fan you'll recall very well in the Cincinnati Red Sox World Series in 75. He made a very controversial call. The runner up at the plate. It was happened in Cincinnati. And some people felt that his catcher Fisk was interfered with, threw the ball away, might have cost him a ball game. There were death threats. And there's young Jonathan still waiting for that chance to throw out the opening ball. He has been primed and ready for half an hour. Again, uh, the young man who was injured in the stands, carried off by Jim Rice, suffered a fractured skull, but is back now. And is that Carl Yastrzemski Sr. behind him, Tony? Mr. Yastrzemski. You can barely see him in the blue suit. So, Carl Sr. doing the coaching, and Jonathan getting ready to do the throwing. Quite a story, the vicious line drive that hospitalized young Jonathan. Jim Rice, many of the Red Sox spent many hours in the hospital with this young man while he was recovering. He's here with his brother and his grandfather today, and his dad. And did a pretty good job. Way to go, Jonathan. That gets the baseball season officially underway. Temperature's got to be about what, Dan? Down on the nice sunny field. Here's Rich Gedman, the catcher. His picture taken. Looking for the low 60s before the afternoon is out, which is a bonus. As we recall last year in Detroit, when the snowstorm blew in and wiped out the opening day, there is Carl Yastrzemski, Jonathan, Carl's dad, posing for a couple of dozen photographers and cameramen in that area. You're talking about Carl Yastrzemski's uh, opening day average of 326. Well, in this ballpark and home openers, he has had some very dramatic days. He's hit about 340 in openers here. Some dramatic home runs to win, gotten key base hits. One of the players who, during his career, has been able to beat you with his legs, his arm, his bat, his head, you name it. So a day for young Jonathan Keene to remember. 37. Of course, a day for anybody to reckon with here when you look at the monster 37 feet high out in left field here at Fenway Park. Most unique park in baseball. There are a lot of tricky areas. That left field line we showed you a while ago. The ball can bounce around there. Short stop and center fielder have to help the left fielder out and balls it to the wall. 379 left center field, dead center. Just about 400 feet. Becomes a regular in here. There is a very tricky spot out there. It's 420, the longest part. And then the bullpen, very reachable by even right-handed hitters in right center field, where it's about 379 or 380. Ted Williams hit a lot over that bullpen, where it's 380. And then it curves in very sharply right down the right field line. It's a park down where it's a hitter's park for a number of reasons, that left field wall. Very little foul territory also down the lines. Any ball that is just barely foul goes out in the stands. The outfielders can't catch them. That's they one of the concerns chance. about Tony Armas uh, having to adjust to Fenway Park as a regular playing home games here in center field. It's going to be a bit of a test for him. Armas started his career at the Pittsburgh organization where he started out as a center fielder. When he got to Oakland, of course, and Henderson in left, Murphy, an excellent center fielder in center, they moved him to right. He's a tremendous throwing arm. In fact, defensively, this Red Sox outfield is very good. Evans is about as good as there is in the game. Well, they're uh, all set to bring the players out of the field. Uh, just before they do, let's join Fergie Oliver now in conversation with Jim Rice. Lineup. 
Well, he's going to mean a lot to me. Uh, the last couple of years, I think I've been pitched around. And of course, Tommy Armors is a is a good hitter and he's a good power hitter. And of course, he's going to put some <laughs> a little fear in the post and pitch your eyes. But if you go back to '78 when we had about six guys had 30 home runs or better, it was better then because you couldn't pitch around anyone. Your lineup, I think, is absolutely awesome. The first five hitters. Uh, what is the big problem, do you think, with Boston this year? And do you think you could go all the way? Well, I think pitching, and of course, you can't rest any of those five guys that you're talking about, Harley. And I think it's the most important part is try to get someone in to give those guys a break when you're going down to July and August when it's a little hot and you're playing every game. And of course, you got to worry about the pitching staff. Uh, of course, you worry about your starting rotation more than anything else because you go to the bullpen, you got long, you got short, and you got middle. But of course, uh, I'd probably say the pitching overall. If you got good pitching, they're going to stop good hitting. Jim Rice, that could very well be uh, the best outfield the Red Sox have had, certainly since '79 when they hit '99. Rice and Freddie Lynn, 39 apiece, and Dwight Evans is still around, of course, at 21 that year. The best all time were the '61 Yankees with Barra, Mandel, and Maris hitting 137. That was the year Roger Maris hit his 61 home runs. Now, if you had to take a guess at who might Turn up by the end of this year to be the MVP in the American League. Rice's name would sure have to be in there, along with Murray from Baltimore, Winfield from the Yankees. Here's Dennis Eckersley in the lineup you'll face for the You're Blue looking Jays for all stars. You might go right to the top. Second base, Damaso Garcia with Dave Collins starting in left field for the Jays. Willie Upshaw at first base. Left Johnson's the DH today. Jesse Barfield's in right. Ernie Witt's the catcher. Lloyd Mosby in center field. Grant Smolenix plays third base. And Alfredo Griffin hits ninth. Shortstop. So as you come around the corner from nine up through one, two, the Blue Jays certainly have some pretty good speed in the base pass to represent them this year. That's one dimension the Jays have, especially with the addition of Collins and the work that Garcia did, stealing 54 last year. The potential of Alfredo Griffin. They can move in the base pass. Versus Toronto, Dennis Eckersley, former of the Cleveland Indians, eight wins, two losses, earned run average under three. This is his fifth straight. Red Sox opener that he is starting today. The top winner on the staff last year for Ralph Hout. The staff does not get many complete ball games. The entire staff had 23 last year. Eckersley, I believe, had 11. And if you're wondering, Tony, about uh, whether he's a slow starter, he's not bad on April 11 10 in the month of April career wise. He's certainly no Dennis Leonard who starts slowly for Kansas City. Other pitchers have trouble. He was one and four in six spring training starts. Uh, so there's maybe some question about him coming in, but certainly he is the star of the Red Sox mound staff in 83. Eckersley, uh, over the last four or five years, has come out of the spring training sites down in Florida, Winter Haven, where the Red Sox train, with an assortment of injuries, either a bad lower back, elbow, shoulder. He says it's the first healthy spring training he's had since 1979. One time very overpowering. Now he'll show you the fastball, still gets you out with it. He'll go to a lot more sliders and breaking balls. Season is about to begin for the Jays and the Red Sox. Damaso Garcia might well have had 200 hits had he not been injured with a pitch he took on the hand late in the season. That cost him that goal, but did finish up at 310. 42 RBIs and 54 stolen bases. Takes the first pitch from Dennis Eckersley. It is ball one. The adjustment that led to Damo's success last year. He moved up on the plate. He had better plate covers the breaking balls and slightly opened the stance where he can see the ball better. Outside again, ball two. We'd be expecting a lot to have Donald duplicate what he did last year. He just did so well. There's the open stance. Right foot about as close to the plate as it can get. Pops it up in behind us. First chance of the year. Ball's just short. On the screen in front of us. It is two balls and a strike. Blue Jays will be improved in the speed department this year with the addition of Collins and Orta, who can run very well. Could be a very important DH for this ball club. George Orta. Not in the lineup today as Garcia goes around and make it two and two. Behind him, Collins and Willie Upshaw here in the first inning for Toronto. In a shallow center field, Tony Armas doesn't move very far for the first out of the game. They have great throwing arms in this Red Sox outfield. Armas, one of the best when he was in right field. Evans, as good as anybody in baseball. Great Armas, Barfield, Evans, and Harold Baines. Here's the defense. Rice and left. Very underrated outfielder. Armas in center, Evans in right. Wade Boggs in third. Glenn Hoffman in short. Julio Valdez in second. Dave Stapleton in first. Rich Gedman, the catcher. 
strike taken by Dave Collins, his first appearance as a Blue Jay, a much happier ball player coming over from the Yankees, where he did that performance last year, 253. Boggs at third, well up in front of the third base back, respecting the speed. Dave Collins looked like he tried to hit it by him. And that's... The plus for Dave Collins will be playing the majority of his games back on artificial surface. Here's Boggs, who now with two strikes has moved back on Collins. Arnie Lansford traded away to the Oakland A's. A lot of pressure defensively on Boggs this year. Collins takes it tight for ball one, one and two. When with Cincinnati, Pete Rose said that Dave Collins was the fight fastest white man in baseball. Nine six hundred yard dash back in South Dakota. Still a high school record, I believe. I think right now you, people might say that Bob Demir, the Philadelphia Phillies, has a step on Collins. Slashes that foul left field side. Holds it one and two. Time will tell, of course, Tony, but my view of the trade involving Collins and Mike Morgan for Dale Murray is an absolute steal for the Toronto Blue Jays. Takes a third called strike. Two away. Collins is down, and Willie Upshaw will come on. To use an Eckersley expression, which has gone around baseball as far as pitchers, he painted the outside corner. Watch this. Perfect pitch. Sinking fastball low and away, and Rich Gedman, the catcher, does a nice little job of just moving that ball in about an inch or so and gets the call. Willie Upshaw drove in 75 runs for the Blue Jays last year. They're looking for a similar kind of production from their first baseman here in 83. Gets it hard, but foul. It's probably the first spring that Willie Upshaw has not had extreme amount of pressure as far as having to make the ball club. Last year, he had fight Mayberry for the job. Had such good springs every year, a couple years before that. He and Domiso Garcia were the only ones who really had jobs lined up when they came to training camp for the Blue Jays. Everything else is up for grabs. Strike two. Eckersley fighting in that strike zone nicely in the first inning. It's 0-2 to Willie Upshaw. He survives. Cliff Johnson will get his first test for the Blue Jays. Gets his sign now from Rich Gedman. Right field. Evans started back. Stops right there. He'll gather it in for the third out. The Blue Jays are three up, three down in the first inning of the 83 Major League Baseball season. Red Sox coming right up. This is the Bats Blue Jays baseball on CTV. I'm Aunt Beatrice, and you probably know my Beatrice Fruit Bottom Yogurt because I always put lots of delicious fruit in it. But I'm just as finicky about my Beatrice Cottage Cheese, my Beatrice Old Fashioned Recipe Ice Cream, and all the other dairy products I make. Now, if any one of them isn't every bit as fresh and delicious as it should be, of course, you should ask for your money back. But I know you won't have to. Beatrice, if it's got my name on it, you've got my word on it. Hey, Woody, I just finished the hardwood floor in your room with this new Valspar polyurethane. It really shines. Yeah, I know. There's also Valspar liquid plastic colors. I used red to spruce up your rocker. In fact, there's a Valspar wood finish for everything. I know, I know. Really? Just how would you know? Yeah, big dummy. Why do you think I'm so much better looking than you? Valspar wood care products for beauty and protection. Take it from someone who really knows what's good for wood. You know, you don't have to be inside a bank to do most of your regular banking. You can do it all easily and conveniently with Commerce Instant Teller. And if you want, outside of regular banking hours, you can make deposits, withdraw cash, transfer funds, even pay many bills. In fact, Instant Teller can do almost anything except talk. What are you waiting for? Apply for Instant Teller today. You can count on the Commerce. Right-hander Dave Steve taking his warm-up pitches against a heavy-hitting first five you'll meet in Boggs, Glad Evans, Jim Rice, Tony Armas, and Yaz, the DH. And then you get the first baseman Dave Stapleton, Rich Gedman, the catcher, Glenn Hoffman, the shortstop, and Julio Valdez playing at second base for the injured Jerry Remy. 17-game winner last year. The man they wrote so much about. 
late last season and in spring training this year. They look for big, big things for Dave Steve. A uh, nice new long-term contract with the Blue Jays. And of course, who else but Steve to pitch at opening day. Throws a strike to Wade Boggs. Steve, the Sporting News Pitcher of the Year for the American League. Look at Boggs from last year when he came up. Replaced Connie Lansford, who was injured off and on. Now over the Oakland A's. He's had some fantastic years hitting in the minor leagues. He's never hit under 300. Three bounces down to Damaso Garcia, and that's the first out. Bring on Dwight Evans. Damo, the man who did not get voting into the All-Star game last year, but probably should have been. Playing up in Toronto, he just did not get the recognition, and nobody realized he was having the kind of year he was first half last year. Well, he got even hotter after the All-Star game, and had they played that game in mid-August, he certainly might have made it. And was injured, of course, as we told you. Evans hit 292 last year. Jim Rice on deck for the Boston Red Sox. Look at those stats. You hear of Yastrzemski, you hear about Rice. Evans' stats last year were better, better than either of the two in almost every area. RBIs, home runs, batting average. His on-base percentage is extremely high, best in the American League. Like that's one of the first things that Ralph Hawk did when he came out of retirement. He said, look, they've been batting you down in the line of sixth, seventh, and eighth. He said, I'm going to move you either first, second, or third, because you can get on base and you can hit the home run. Steve gets a strike there. He's been pitching him carefully. Got to pitch him uh, down and away. It's a ball and two strikes now. Steve traditionally works very quickly. Hard shot, passed up shot, base hit. That's something that Evans would not have done just a few years ago. He saw that left field wall, the green monster, and tried to pull everything. He was leaving breaking balls outside part of the plate. They would strike him out a lot more than he does now. Now he'll go the opposite way as he just did. Let's see where the ball is. Ernie Witt setting up inside. Fastball or maybe a slider that just hung up there outside part of the plate about belt high. And here's Jim Rice. 309 last year. He close to driving in 100 runs for the Red Sox. Strike one to Rice. Red Sox, a team that rarely tries to steal bases, especially up here in Fenway. And Jerry Remy's in the lineup on the road, he'll take a chance. Side for one and one. Not a great deal of team speed here with the Red Sox. Rice has hit Blue Jay pitching like he's owned it. 19 home runs and 53 runs batted in against Blue Jays pitching. That's the best of any player in the American League. It's two balls and a strike. Pattern that they try and use on Jim Rice, bust him inside. He likes to get his arms extended so he can generate all of his power. Steve goes breaking ball away. Two and two. Rice is averaging 259 on opening day, seven for 27. As Tony says, he's teed off against the Blue Jays and now the Jays' seventh year in the American League. Strikeout number one for Dave Steve and two are gone. But Tony Armas, the new Red Sox in center field coming on in the cleanup spot. You know, Don, they've talked about this power on this Red Sox team, and these well, Evans, Rice, and Armas could very well hit over 100 home runs among the three of them, but they will also strike out a lot. Last year, Armas struck out 128 times, Rice 98, Evans 125. So when you stack three players like that together against good pitching, and they don't move base runners, you're going to lose those three to two, two to one ball games when you're on the road. So you swing for the fences, you sacrifice a little bit as far as trying to scramble for that one run. Advancing base runners, that's the name of the game. You're going to win a pennant. Move them along. A lot of Armas. pressure on Armas after the kind of spring he, he didn't have. And out of a good spring training with the Red Sox takes ball one well, he came off an off year last year on 230 the Oakland A's ball club he is a streak hitter most hitters are but his cold streaks are long and his hot streaks are long one on one now man at first base with two out Dwight Evans has 
273 game consecutive appearance streak into this ball game today. Began with the uh, last three games of 1980. He hasn't missed a game since. Inside, two and one. Steve's got a pretty good fastball today. See the ball that he struck Rice out was up in Jimmy Rice's eyes. It just took off. Dave, of course, with a good slider, throw curve. Last year started working the straight change in a little bit more. Hot foul. So it's two and two to Tony Armas with Evans at first base. Two out, a scoreless first inning here in Fenway Park. The Yankees and the Blue Jays open the Toronto season on Saturday. Exhibition Stadium, 1.30. Oh strike take it. Two strikeouts for Steve as the Red Sox strand Dwight Evans with his base hit here in the first inning. One complete Fenway Park in Boston. The Blue Jays nothing and the Red Sox nothing. And this. If you like soda crackers, then come along with us. We'll tell you about the pluses of Premium Plus. A plus about our cracker, it's made by Christy Brown. So you can pick a plus almost anywhere in town. A plus is that it's thinner. A plus is that it's crisper. With Premium Plus crackers, there's lots to go round. A plus is how we taste. We're the pick of the bunch. The biggest plus of all is the plus of our crunch. Now add up all these pluses, and you'll know why we're us. Because if you haven't got a plus, you got a minus. Just a minus. Just a minus. Yeah. This is the 1983 Long Boy Supreme, powered by an engine designed to last 50% longer than most other lawnmower engines. This lawn boy can do the work of five lawnmowers. It cuts, side bags, rear bags, mulches. It'll even shred leaves. Summer after summer, year after year. The hardworking five-in-one lawnmower by Lawn Boy. Lawn Boy, as time goes by, you'll know why. Budweiser salutes all the people who make the music we love. Yeah, this Bud's for you if you like your beer with that distinctively clean, crisp Beechwood Age taste and smoothness that says Budweiser. Cliff Johnson starts the second for the Blue Jays. Scoreless ball game. Then it'll be Jesse Barfield and Ernie Witt hitting behind him. Jays bought power when they got Johnson from Oakland. Man who figures to hit pretty well in the Exhibition Stadium in Toronto and right here at Fenway, too. Hits it hard. Off the wall. Rice playing it smartly. Waits for the bounce and will hold Johnson to a long single off the left field monster. They want some power from the right side to be supplied out of the D8 spot from Cliff Johnson. And if he is healthy, if you get 400 at bats, he's going to hit you 20 home runs. Strike out on occasion, but he's got one thing in mind when he goes to the plate down that swing for the fences. He doesn't mess around. No question with Johnson and uh, Orta, Blue Jays are much stronger at the D8 spot. Ord Hagen, plagued by injuries throughout last year, Otto Velez unable to play. And there'll be times when Dave Collins, if you want to put a Hoskin Powell in, Barry Bunnell in the outfield, Dave Collins could DH for you. Look out. Inside the barfield, ball one. Eckersley has had four opening day starts for the Sox. He has two wins and no losses. If he should win today, break the Red Sox record for opening day wins. There's some interesting people, and we could do it in the form of a quiz. Cy Young is 2-0 oh opening day. Wes Farrell, 2-0. Eckersley, who was the third Red Sox pitcher? Two wins and no losses. Opening day assignments. I think it's an interesting name. Back in and, the 1930s. And if the DHs had been around back then, he may not have hit all those home runs. Babe Ruth. Back in the teens of the century. Big fair. Round to third base comes Johnson. Heading for second is Jesse Barfield. They'll hold right there with nobody out for the Blue Jays in the second inning. 
Jesse, again, if he stays healthy, remember Bobby Cox broke him in slowly last year. It was platooning him, trying to gain his confidence. And I really believe that Barfield, with 500, 550 plate appearances, is going to hit you 25 or 30 overs. There's a tricky corner. The shortstop has to go out. Look at how close, just a couple of feet away are the fans who can reach over and touch the ball almost in fair territory. A very intimate ballpark, one with character. Sure has. Second base umpire Ken Kaiser having to make the call because from our view back here, we can't see in that corner down there. The home plate umpire would have some trouble. Infield back, aside from Boggs, conceding the run, actually pitching from the stretch. Bernie Wett will drive in the Blue Jays' first run as two of them will come home. Johnson followed by Barfield, and it's 2-0 Toronto. Bernie had a terrific spring, and that's something he was doing more this spring training. He worked on it last year, but basically he's been a pull hitter. Sully, Sullivan, first base coach. But in the spring, he started hitting more balls hard to left center and up the middle. It was a way you could get Ernie Wood out. If you kept the ball away from him, he would hit the ground ball to the right side. Right there, a sinker that was a little bit up, but tailing away, and he went with it. Two RBIs. Ernie Wett and uh, three straight hits for the Blue Jays. Johnson and with the singles, Barfield's double, 2 0 Toronto, and this is Lloyd Mosby with strike one to him. Lloyd's job right now, looking down at signs from Jimmy Williams. With that right side open, Valdez playing toward the bag and Stapleton holding the runner. Lloyd should be trying to pull the ball right now, take advantage of that hole between the first baseman and the second base. Look at how much room Lloyd's got. Ground ball on that side, he'll never get it. Takes it high, one and one. You know, I think, Don, people forget that Mosby is still the youngest player on this Blue Jays roster. Barfield, a couple of months older, still just 23. He's had three full years in the major leagues. And I know at spring training, we were hearing from coaches as he goes around for strike two, who scouts who still think he was brought along too quickly and has been detrimental to. It's a hard thing to judge. Uh, when Robin Yount came up at 18 for the Brewers, there were people for the first three years said he couldn't play shortstop, and they, they brought him up too soon. Look what happened to him last year. Yeah. It's a difficult thing to judge. Blue Jays organization, Pat Gillick, Paul Beeston, they made a decision. Mosby has potential and has time on his side. Good eye there. Ball two. It is two and two to Lloyd. Nobody out. Rance Monodix, the third baseman, is on deck. Two runs in already on three straight hits off Dennis Eckersley here in the second. It's going. And he's protected by a foul ball to the seat's third base side by Mosby. So back will come Ernie Witt. Last year, we saw Bobby Cox run the Blue Jays a little bit more than the years prior to it, and we'll see it even more this year. Expecting right there, putting a little pressure on Mosby with no outs, two and two count, but just get a piece of the ball. Cut. You can already win a catcher. He's going to get thrown out if he doesn't get a piece of it. I think you see as much platooning on the part of the Blue Jays we saw last I, year. I think in the catchers, there's Bobby Cox. You know, many times what a manager will do, he'll guess on what the pitch is going to be. As far as whether or not he's going to send, and that, that's part of knowing the tendencies of a catcher and the opposing manager. I'm guessing whether you're going to hit and run or not. Mosby's gone. Here's Rats Monix, who again this year will share third base with Garth Ward. Eckersley reaching back for a little bit more. Looked like it might have been the four seamer across the seam fastball, one that takes off. You're throwing with a seam that will sink. Monix for 35 runs battled in, got some hits in key situations last year, Tony. Takes strike one here. He was very much a surprise for the Blue Jays. They got him just as the season opened. And there was a last minute change on this Blue Jays roster. <laughs> Mickey Klutz, who started out in the Yankee organization, was with Oakland, has been injured a lot. Was signed to a contract today. Tucker Ashford will go back to the Yankees. Woo. And Randy Moffitt is officially a Blue Jay now. Relief pitcher from the Giants in Houston. Billy Jean King's brother. Let's hope he serves him up beautifully at 83. Ooh, pitch out. Yep, not going for it. Ralph Houck will call most of the pitch outs from the dugout for Gedman. Jeff Newman, they got in from Oakland catches. He's a more of a veteran catcher. 
as is Allenson. Ralph will let them call pitch outs on their own. Johnny, no, it's Lee Stang with the sunglasses, the pitching coach, and Ralph Hopp, former Yankee manager, former Tiger manager. Alex, what's that? There's Deep a win. The right There's field. a win. There's a win. Carrying out of you here. Bet. Home run to the bullpen of the Red Sox. 4 0 Toronto, and a two run shot by Rams Alex. and four hits off Eckersley so far. In the spring of the year and the fall of the year, the wind will blow sometimes in from left field, but many times out toward right field. That's what it's doing today. Evans finds the warning track, finds the fence, and the wind drifts it away. When you get into the warm summer months, the wind is usually blowing out to left field. Rance Mullins adds two more. With Johnson with him down there. Johnson scored the first Blue Jay run of the season. Driven in. I already went along with Barfield. All one to Alfredo Griffin, the shortstop. So the Blue Jays has a chance to get some speed on the base pass here. Nobody on now, but just one out. After Griffin, it's Garcia and then Collins if it goes that far. There's one and one. Man Griffin, I think, is starting to smooth out his swing from the left side, getting rid a little bit rid of that uppercut that he's had from the left side. He's a natural right-handed hitter. I really believe he's going to 280 this year, Don. 41 last year. Let's stop with the right field. Let's see what Wins the wind got will do that for one him. Too. Not this time. Right there. Great catch by Dwight Evans at the wall. Just denying Alfredo a home run. Two gone now. Do you recall in a 75 World Series in game number six, the dramatic home run that Fisk hit? Remember the catch he made yep. on Joe Morgan? He is the best out there in right field. Barfield's got a chance to be as good if he keeps improving. Baines with the White Sox. The man right here's won a ton of gold gloves for just those kinds of catches. That's the second out. Damaso Garcia fly to center field in the first inning. Dave Collins on deck behind him. Number 10. Now Ralph Hauk has gotten his bullpen up. Bruce Hurst. Hurst had elbow surgery at the end of the last year. The team doctor, Dr. Pappas, says he cannot believe that he is going to be on the opening day roster able to throw as hard as he did. That is outside the Domiso ball one. I was thinking back to last year. Griffin only had one home run. It was right here against Dennis Eckersley. So change he up. almost made it an annual event. Eckersley threw him a change up. Popped up. Boggs coming on from third. He'll make the play. The Blue Jays send seven men to the plate. They get four hits. A home run by Rance Monodix, the big blow. They score four second inning runs against the Boston Red Sox. They need it four nothing. This is Bats Blue Jays baseball and season. Super Channel is your movie star. Introducing a new movie every day. Over 100 movies in April. See Timothy Hutton in Taps, a hard-hitting movie about military tradition and morality. Mel Brooks and Marty Feldman in the slapstick comedy silent movie. Paul Newman and Sally Field in the absence of malice. See The Long Good Friday, the finest gangster movie made in the last 20 years. And Clash of the Titans, a fun fantasy adventure for the whole family. Super Channel, television's brightest star. Call your cable company. Softness is a new bathroom tissue called Duvet. Duvet. Softness is a two-ply tissue for twice the softness. Duvet. Softness is quilted into every sheet. Duvet. Softness is hundreds of gently quilted cushions. Duvet. New duvet two-ply bathroom tissue from Scott. Quilted for softness. Duvet. When I want the great taste of a candy mint, and I want the fresh, clean taste of a breath mint, I turn to Sirs, because it's two mints in one. Great tasting certs is a perfect combination breath mint and candy mint in one with Retson to leave your breath feeling fresh and clean. A great tasting candy mint and breath mint in one. Hey, Susan. Hi. Turn to great tasting certs. It's two mints in one. Now in five even better tasting fruit flavors. Lead off hitter in the second, Carl Yastrzemski for the Red Sox. Yeah, as you at this point will be used primarily as a DH against right-handed pitchers. And he thinks it'll help him. 
five years from the day he takes his uniform off, he'll be up in Cooperstown. Automatic. Strike two, one ball and two strikes. Dave Staple to the first base, but Rich Gedman, the catcher, hitting behind him, and there's a big sign to thank Yaz for his contribution since 1961. The Red Sox fans here at Fenway, what contributions they've been. Slices that foul to hold the cat at one and two. He's done about all there can be done in a baseball uniform. He has one goal. He hopes will be fulfilled this year, and that's to be on the World's Championship team and get a ring. Way over the top. First sign of wildness from Dave Steve, who makes it two and two. Yes, yeah, said there's a one in one million chance that he might come back at the end of the year, but it's doubtful. I asked him if he would like to manage someday. He said no. He said, I'd like to be a roving instructor in the Red Sox farm system. I want to teach kids how to hit, how to field, how to run the bases. He said, I think that'd be a, a very fruitful existence for me. Full count to Yaz. Takes a pass. Steve is up high and outside. So both pitchers had relatively overpowering innings. Eckersley striking out one. Steve striking out two. Now the walk to Yaz. One base hit so far given up. That to Evans by Steve. And here's Dave Stapleton. Man who can hit the opposite way very well. Like last year, you can see those stats. Not as good as he had in the minor leagues in the year before. He tried to pull the ball too much. Ball one. And out comes Ernie Witt. Bobby and Cox going to race him to the mound. He wants to talk with Steve, too. Dave, Steve says he likes to pitch in cool weather. He feels he has a distinct advantage. Cox out there probably with a four-run lead, which is always... A problem area with any pitcher especially a younger pitcher of course Steve does have the experience on the mound but you get a four run lead you can kind of relax and get behind hitters I think you've got it made and all he's got to do that like we saw there's the defense Collins Mosby Barfield Alex Griffin Garcia option a lot of speed defensively on this ball club yes. on the outfield especially in the middle of the diamond with the catcher and Steve the pitcher on the other hand Steve might have been trying to overthrow also it's up high again. It's 2-0. Oh. That pitches up, hasn't it? Yep. Well, Cox tried to settle him down. As you said, a four-run lead might uh, allow him to think he can do things that he shouldn't be trying to get away with out here. There's a strike. Meantime, you know, if there had been a little... Remember, Al Widmar doesn't go out to the mound. Uh, but if there had been a mechanical problem, he probably relayed it to Bobby Cox, who went out and told Steve. Maybe just something that threw his delivery off, his release point off. Check swing foul. It's two and two. Steve had an excellent spring. Threw the ball very well. Very impressive in Florida. And impressive here until this point when he walked his Stremski. This program is written by copyright. Any use without permission of the Toronto Blue Jays baseball club is prohibited. Just missed. It is three and two. He's miss, missing the strikes out with his own fastball up high and inside. His breaking ball down too low. So they talk about hitting a baseball being so difficult. But when you think of the different release points there are, or where he steps, the different spots in the strike zone, it gets to be a pretty intricate thing to pitch also. Steve is 3-3 three and three with three complete games against the Boston Red Sox. Last year he was 1-1. One and one. He lost to Mike Torres, 8-7, and shut out the Red Sox 4-0. Allowing only two hits in August. Today he's got a 4 nothing lead, but he's got some trouble brewing here in the second with the leadoff batter Yastrzemski on and a walk, and now pitching three and two to Dave Stapleton. Rich Gedman on deck, and there's another walk. Steve is known what big leads can mean or don't mean here. He was ahead seven to one last season, wound up losing that ball game, but the Jays did. Right now in a bit of trouble with a 4 0 lead. Yastrzemski in second. Stapleton is over to first base on uh, two straight walks. Nobody out for Rich Gedman, his first appearance at the plate this year. The catcher. Broke in 26 runs last year. And he's high. You know, when you look at Steve's stats off last year with his 17 wins, 288 in the third innings pitched. He walked just 75. Gave up less hits than he's pitched. 
the strikeout to base on ball ratio doubled. 141 strikeouts to 75 base on balls. Very impressive stats. There was a strike there to make it one and one, but evidence that he is still struggling somewhat here against Gedman. Foul back, a ball and two strikes. Finally, he's got himself ahead of the hitter. Glenn Hoffman, the shortstop, is on deck. Remember, nobody out for the Red Sox here in the second. They trail 4 0. Two men on base. About Steve, when he uh, he's got to the point now, I think, where he recognizes himself when he's getting a little bit of a rut. He can come out of it most of the times by himself. Are they going to go inside with him? Or sink her away. That is the third strikeout for Dave today. First out of the inning for the Red Sox. He gets get the tremendous movement on the ball, down and away, a sinking fastball. That's why Steve can uh, pitch himself out of trouble. He's an excellent fielder. So he can get the double play, keep the ball down, get a ground ball. He can also throw up and in. And run the fastball and get a strike. Now, that was just a terrific sinking fastball. This is Glenn Hoffman. How many times have we seen this before when Steve, especially in the second or third innings early on, does get himself in trouble? As you see, pitches himself on well, then finds a groove that lasts him the rest of the game. Falling behind Hoffman at 1 0. Julio Valdez, the second baseman, number nine hitter, is on deck. Down low for 2-0. Oh. Down to the bottom of the Red Sox lineup. They don't have a whole lot of punch. They Valdez, sure do at the top. Valdez, Hoffman, Gedman struggling around 200 last year. Stapleton had an off year. His first five spots, though, are murder. Boggs, Evans, Rice, Armish, Yastrzemski. Strike taken. It's 2-1. and one. The question mark on the Red Sox is starting pitching. And there may be some questions defensively at third base. Side three and one. They could be living very dangerously with three left handers going here in their mound staff for the first time since 1973. In this ballpark, that's the last thing you want. Garcia can't track it down, just beyond him. And they'll hold the runner, Yastrzemski, at third. Of course, Yaz without a great amount of speed. They load him up with one out. A little bloop single by Hoffman. He sawed Hoffman out, but it'll show you what can happen when you get behind a hitter. Hoffman hitting out of the A spot. Steve had to come in. If he could throw that same fastball but keep it down, he's got a weak ground ball. But when you get it up, the hitter doesn't have to loft it. Let's see where it is. A lot of people say, what a lucky hit. He fisted it, jammed him. But Steve had to throw a strike. He couldn't take a chance of staying down low again, looking for the sinker ball, ground ball, which might have been ball four. Well, Steve is aware that this is the best spot to end this inning right now, the double play ball, if he can get one, because it's Boggs and Evans and Rice coming up after this man, Julio Valdez. One out, bases loaded, and a strike taken by Valdez. Steve pitching from the stretch with the bases loaded, trying to hold that runner on first and at second base a little bit closer so that they get a better chance as infielders to make the double play. Strike two. Despite his trouble, of the eight batters he has faced, he has struck out three already. Now has an 0-2 count to Valdez. He has walked one. Given up just two hits. Valdez stays alive, getting a piece of that. Want to remind you, Saturday, 1.30 Exhibition Stadium. Fans in the Toronto area, the Yankees open the Blue Jays' home season. And we are asked to advise you that the TTC, public transportation, is your best bet to get there. It'll be a busy day. At Exhibition Stadium, high, ball one. Saturday and Sunday games, both at 1.30. If you can't make it, we'll have them on television for you. Another piece. Now there's and Steve in a battle right now for Steve to hold this 4-0 lead. Pitcher's always got to extend himself a little bit more in Fenway Park with that left field wall and, of course, with all the power this ball club has. And, then, and anything like this could tell later on, even if Dave pitches out of it, could tell around the seventh or eighth inning. He's making a lot of pitches. And they've all had to be hard pitches with men on base. Mike Morgan begins to throw. Came over from the Yankees. Boy, was he throwing hard in spring training. Surprised a lot of people. They didn't think he could throw that hard. 
He gets Valdez, his fourth strikeout, two gone now with the bases loaded. Steve has thrown over 50 pitches already. Well, they're going to watch him, Al Widmar and Bobby Cox. When he gets around 100 pitches, they're going to start seeing if he's going to tire. This is too early in the year. Good tailing fastball again to Valdez. Too early in the year with cool weather to take a chance and hurt a pitcher's arm for the rest of the year. Boggs grounded to Garcia, but has power, as you can see there, in 349 last season. Stremski is at third, Stapleton at second base, Hoffman at first. They're loaded up with two gone for Boggs. Difficult man of defense. He hits the ball all over. He'll pull, a change up, or a breaking ball. He'll hit the fastball the opposite way. Uses the whole field. Strike one. Shaw will make the play. Steve, the cover, and he gets out of it, leaving three Boston Red Sox stranded on the base paths here at Fenway Park. The Blue Jays' 4 0 lead is intact through two complete here in Boston. And this is Levant's Blue Jays baseball on CTV. When you're feeling up and your friends are near, friends are near. Since Colgate first introduced fluoride, we've been working to put an end to cavities. Today, we are closer to that goal than ever before. In 1974, we launched our most exhaustive study ever to develop a new generation cavity fighter, one even better than original Colgate, announcing Colgate with mineral building fluorides. A cavity fighter so effective, it provides significantly more cavity protection than ever before. Here's why. Teeth contain minerals. This is a magnified picture of a healthy tooth. Every day, teeth lose minerals. That's how cavities start. With regular brushing, Colgate's mineral-building fluorides help replace lost minerals. And when minerals are replaced, cavities can't start. Clinical research with thousands of dental examinations proves the mineral-building fluorides in new Colgate provide significantly more cavity protection. And Colgate toothpaste is recognized by the Canadian Dental Association. Today's Colgate, significantly more cavity protection than ever before. Jimmy Williams and John Sullivan back at the Blue Jays on the base pass coaching this season. Williams over third. And they'll have Dave Collins, Willie Upshaw, and Cliff Johnson to direct if they can get on base here in the third. The Blue Jays lead four to nothing. Collins struck out. Eckersley has fanned two so far. Dave Steve has struck out four Boston hitters. Collins, a very intense young man. He, he told you how he runs. He can slap the ball to the left field. Not a whole lot of power. Knuckleball is sinking quickly, but therefore it is Tony Arbus. First test for him in center field. So now the power section of the Blue Jays with Upshaw, Johnson, and then Barfield if it goes that far here in the third. Upshaw applied to right of the first inning. Very productive ball player. See if the wind will help this. Still blowing out that you way. Bet. Evans! Did he get that or not? No. See Roy Lee Jackson. No. Nope. Gone. It Home run for Willie Upshaw. 5 nothing Blue Jay. And the Boo Birds descend on Dennis Eckersley. His second home run. Both He's home runs, hit. although Mullix was hit a little bit longer than that were pushed out of this ballpark by wind at somewhere between 20, 25 miles an hour and gusting to even stronger. Evans finds the ball with his right hand just over the outstretched webbing of the glove. And until he came back to earth, we weren't sure, nor was the umpire at first base. They Ford if that indeed had gone past his glove, but it did. Here's Cliff Johnson. He got a single his first time, huh? More power to face Eckersley. 
the right side. Inside, it's 2-0. Oh. Cliff Johnson, well, I should turn it around. Lloyd Mosby and Jesse Barfield have already taken the Cliff Johnson. Cito Gaston's done an excellent job as a hitting coach, but it always helps to have one of your peer group, another player. And Mosby and Barfield have been sitting on the bench all spring next to Cliff Johnson, talking about the philosophy, how pitchers will pitch you, what to look for, how to have a game plan. He's going to be the motivator on this ball club. If anybody gets out of line, rather than the coach or Bobby Cox, the manager, Heath Clips might pound a few bumps on their heads. He's strong enough to do it. <laughs> Look at that swing. Just yeah. marks groups out on the ground. Every one of his swings is almost just like that. Watch this. He took his cut, didn't he? <laughs> He's one of those fellas uh, who was brought up through the minor leagues as a DH. Did some catching for Houston. Can be a third catcher on this ball club if they need him in a pinch. Can be a first base, but the bat sails past Eckersley. They got a piece of that. It's two and two. But he says only in extreme emergencies would he be playing defensively. You might recall the hubbub of a couple of years ago in the league championship series. Ron Davis of the Yankees and Cliff Johnson of the Oakland A's and Billy Martin. We watched the swing again, just trying to protect the plate, get a piece of it. Johnson kept stepping out and stalling and trying to rattle Ron Davis, the hard thrower now with Minnesota. Finally, he walked a couple of guys and cost Davis a ball game. He got to him. Oh, just foul. That's that tricky jutting out spot right there. The left fielder, Rice, has to protect that left field corner. The shortstop, Hoffman, has to go out in case it bounces. If he doesn't go out, you see guys can get a double or a triple on a ball like that. Very easily, sure. But many times the shortstop, it's programmed that when a ball's in the left field line, you'll go off for relay, or you might even go to cover second base for a throw. Right there, it's another one of those tricky nooks and crannies in this ballpark. Well, it's tough for the defenders, but I hope they never change it. It's got so much character at Fenway Park. So many interesting situations can crop up as a result. Lifted high, but not deep by Johnson. Coming on is the right fielder Dwight Evans, second baseman giving away Valdez, and that'll be the out second of the inning. It'll bring on Jesse Barfield. Evans has had to do some work today. The Red Sox, his third put out of the ball game. Barfield double to uh, get the Blue Jays rolling back in the second, driven home by Ernie Witt, in the second run of the day. They lead five nothing right now here in the third. Strike one to Jesse. Eckersley only had one easy inning. That was the first. He retired Garcia Collins and Upshaw in order. Then had to face seven men on the second, giving up four of the five runs. And Upshaw is homeward here as the second man up in this, the third inning. You know, Don Eckersley was talking about the change he saw in Barfield this spring training. The last time he faced him in the spring, he said, I threw a fastball inside to brush Barfield back. So the pitch I thought was going to be a little reminder for the season opener. Try and scare him off the plate. He said, Barfield just leaned back, looked me in the eyes, and scowled at me. He said, I knew he had more confidence already this year. Eckersley gets his third strikeout of the day right there to retire the Blue Jays in the third. They get the one run, though, on Upshaw's home run. Lead at 5 nothing. This is the Bats. Blue Jays baseball on CTV. For generations, we at Kraft have been making our mayonnaise the best it can be with fine ingredients, creamy texture, delicate taste. Mmm, good idea then. A good idea today. Kraft Real Mayonnaise. If we can't make the best, we won't make it. Driving along in a new set of wheels With help from alone, the dream became real Buying this new car to see the Rockies was a great move But it wouldn't have happened without a commerce personal loan They offered us competitive rates Plus a payment plan geared towards uh, our budget If you've got something worthwhile in mind a Commerce personal loan can help make it happen The lines of destiny lie within the palm of your hand. Each line states something of you, your past, and the future that awaits you. 
Gina, the psychic European spiritual reader, can help you unfold the mystery of the fate that your palm holds. Gina will also tell you what the cards predict for your future. Call Gina today to make an appointment. Gina, psychic European spiritual reader of cards and palms. Phone 576-4992 in Kitchener. Here again is Dwight Evans being tested just missing that ball that was a home run by Willie Upshaw. Wind assisted both Blue Jay homers in that direction today as Evans gave it all he had and came up short. Fifth Golden Glove he won last year. Dwight Evans leads it off of the Red Sox in the third. They're down 5 nothing. Jim Rice, Tony Armas will follow. The power section again of this Red Sox lineup. Dave Steve offers up ball one. Evans third in the MVP voting last year in the American League. Yount of course won it. Followed by Eddie Murray of the Orioles. Highest on base percentage of anybody in the American League at 404 lifetime. It's a lot of walks, has the potential, they hit 40 home runs. One third of an awesome outfield for the Boston Red Sox. You know, down the role of the number two hitter in the American League has changed so with the designated hitter. It's different now than it is in the uh, National League. National League second place, if you want a guy can protect the base dealer, the number one hitter. Three and oh, taking for three and one. He has hit three balls in each of the last six hitters, Steve. We'll have to watch him for his control. Sorry, Tony. Now, uh, in the American League, with the DH with nine hitters in the lineup, the number nine hitter many times is looked at as a second leadoff hitter. You get a good hitter there, and you, you start that cycle all over again. Nine hitter, first hitter, second, third, fourth. So the number two hitters become an RBI spot. Yount did last year, hitting out of the two spot. So they had Gantner hitting nine over there. Uh, the Brewers, he was right around 300. That's where Collins is playing for the Blue Jays this season. Up high, he walks Dwight Evans. That is the third walk given up by Steve. He has struck out four. Given up just two hits, but starting off the second is the third as he did the second by walking his strength score. Evans last year with 112 bases on balls. Very disciplined hitter. Rice struck out the first time back in the first inning. Ball scoots away from Witt. He pounces on it quickly. No advance by Dwight Evans. Rice looks for breaking balls off Steve. He'll sit on the breaking balls up until two strikes many times. He knows he's going to get the slider of the curveball. Red Sox did not have a good spring. They were the bottom of the American League list of teams, 9 and 16. Blue Jays had their best ever 16 wins. Can't put a great deal of importance in preseason records. It does give you some indication as to how a team's coming along. And indeed, today the Red Sox have struggled. They're up at the top of Fenway Park. They are everywhere crammed in here, close to 33,000 on opening day. That's the way this park has changed this year. Those are new seats just opened up for this ball game. I don't know what that will add as far as attendance. Maybe a couple thousand more they can seat here in Fenway. Big pitch for Steve right now. Behind in the count. Two and one, it's two and two. Well, that's the secret of a good pitcher right there. Great pitcher right there. When you can get behind a hitter and throw your breaking ball over for a strike. Johnny Sane, great pitching instructor, great pitcher. So if you can throw your breaking ball over. Bounces off Steve and they get rice. Did that hit his foot or the edge of the rubber? I really couldn't tell. Hit the, rubber. the rubber and then good reaction by Monolix coming all the way across from third base in the high bounce. Let's watch it again. It catches the corner of the rubber, I believe, pops up in the air. Jimmy Rice didn't get a real good break out of the box and a very nice play by Monolix. You're looking at a uh, first and second situation without that play and nobody out. And Steve would have been in deep trouble once again this inning. So he advances Evans to second with one out for Tony Armas. He wants a new baseball. That would get scuffed up pretty good, or the umpire does, having hit the rubber. Ordinarily, I don't know if uh, the hitter asks for that ball or somebody from the bench. Ordinarily, a pitcher gets a, a scuffed up baseball. They want to keep it. That ball can do tricks. Still, the pitcher would, yeah. I think it's uh, the guys in the white uniforms who don't want it around. One strike to Tony Armas. There's a big out getting Rice. Fine play by Monix. Stremski is on deck. Steve has been tough against this part of the order. 
He's gotten Rice twice, once in a strikeout. He struck out Armas in the first inning. Walked Yastrzemski in his only appearance. Right now, it's two strikes to Armas. See what Ernie Witt does now. If he tries to move Armas off the plate with a fastball, or if he stays with the break, he looks like he's going to punch him inside. That's what it looks like. I went breaking ball again. Not a bad pitch, just missed one and two. The first two breaking balls to Armas, Steve dropped down a little bit, went for his three quarters delivery a little bit side of him, got a bigger break on the curveball. Showed Armas a little something different. Jam. High, he sure did jam him. Here's Mullenick settling under it at third base. Two away. I say, say one thing, when Steve's in a groove like he was in the first inning and appears to be now again to Rice and Armas, he is so pretty to watch. Not only can he be overpowering, he went breaking ball, breaking ball, three in a row, down low and away, and then he busted him inside and shattered his bat. Rocky Rowe, third base umpire. He's called a timeout because Dave Collins in left field is tying his shoelace. Yastrzemski has hit safely in every opening day game, all 22 he has played in, all but four. Upshaw playing deeply on the right side with two outs, a runner on second base. That right side of the diamond especially has got to try and knock anything down to save a run. Big cut by Yaz for strike one. Evans at second, two gone. Blue Jays lead 5 nothing as we're in the Red Sox third inning. Teams have an off day tomorrow. Play again here at Fenway Thursday. Then the Blue Jays back home to face the Yankees Saturday at 1.30. Foul back right below us. Just challenging Kyle with fastball in the first two pitches. It's one thing Yastrzemski has always said. He said, I'll know my time to quit baseball will come when I can no longer get around in the fastball. So that'll show you what Steve is doing. He's challenged Kyle with two of them. And he's making contact right there. Missed for ball one. One and two to Yaz. Steve has given up just two hits. And he struck out four. He's walked three now, however. Willie Upshaw gathers it out of the dirt. He'll make the play and assist it. The Red Sox strand another base runner, their fifth of the ball game, and come up empty again. Three complete. Toronto leading Boston five to nothing. This is LeBass Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Cavities. Did you know that seven out of ten cavities occur here in the back teeth? That's why you need this, the Reach toothbrush. Reach is angled like a dental instrument to reach back teeth and help prevent cavities, especially those seven out of ten cavities that occur in your back teeth. Remember the name, Reach. Now cavity prevention is within your reach. The original compact head and the new longer head reach. is coming up this Saturday afternoon, April the 9th at 1.30. Billy Martin and the New York Yankees will visit, and you will want to be on hand for all of the color and excitement of opening day. Now, in addition, the first 20,000 fans entering the stadium will receive a free Blue Jays team calendar. There are plenty of reserved seats available, and general admission tickets are now also on sale at all regular outlets. All right, Fergie. Also, they'll be playing Sunday at 1.30. Game two of that series with the Yankees. Here is Ernie Witt. Start the Blue Jay fourth. Drove in a couple of runs. Back in the second. Signal to center field. Witt, one of the most improved catchers. Major leagues in 82. 
He'll share that spot with Buck Martinez again in 83. One and one to win. Lloyd Mosby and Rance Mullenix on deck behind him. What production Bobby Cox got out of Martinez and Witt last year. 20 plus home runs, about 80 RBIs. He'd take that again. I think there are only about three catching combinations in the American League that did that well. It's like what Cox got out of third base we alluded to earlier with Mullenix and Orange. Similar situation. I think that's a spot. Bobby Cox, who is one year smarter as far as what American leaguers might do. Remember, he spent a number of years helping build that Atlanta Braves franchise. Torrey got a lot of the way. That's the first time. I was expecting it sooner or later from Eckersley. I thought he might do it to Cliff Johnson a while back. To just kind of a little calling card to alert some of the Blue Jays hitters. Nah, just a nice brushback pitch. Right just above the belt. Flips Ernie Witt with two strikes. Well, it's a little late for a calling card. The Jays have uh, hung up some damage on Dennis already with five runs and five hits. Lead 5 nothing here at the top of the fourth inning. Right back to the pitcher, Rutgers Lake. He'll make the play easily across to Dave Stapleton for the first down. Yesterday in the American League, as they opened up, Baltimore beaten by Kansas City at home 7-2. Texas defeated Chicago White Sox, the choice of many to win the West 5-3. There are four other games in the American League today. They're all night games coming up later. Cincinnati over Atlanta 5-4 in the National League opener yesterday. Here's Mosby. Cracks it hard, but foul. First base side. One strike, one out, nobody on. Fourth inning. If you saw many of our telecasts last year, you might have noted that Lloyd Mosby seemed to change almost every at bat. His hands one time were high. Now look where he's got him. Seemed to be more relaxed. He's lowered his hand. He's put his bat more straight up, upright position, instead of flattening it out parallel to the ground. He said he's going to try and stick with this and try and he thinks it'll be make his hands a little bit faster, a little bit more relaxed. Good change up. Trying to build himself up over the winter, did not play winter ball for the first time in many years. One and two right now. Thinks it'll benefit him coming into this 83 season. No question, young Lloyd has been struggling. But he ever ever gets it together, look out. He's of two homers by Upshaw and Mullenix, albeit somewhat wind assisted, out to uh, right center field so far today. Two and two now to Lloyd. Eckersley throwing hard has not encountered the control problem Steve has so far today, but he has been tagged. Lloyd thought about that, reached for it, and at strike three, he's now struck out. In both at bats today, two away for the Blue Jays, and for Eckersley, that is strikeout number four. Something that Cito Gaston and uh, Bobby Cox have tried to impress on Mosby without taking away his aggressiveness at the bat, trying to you know, get him not to swing at quite so many bad pitches. That's a ball right there, six, eight inches off the strike, so you just can't hit that kind of pitch. Look out. Get him. Yeah. There's another little call. Guy. He's getting a warning, and it may be a fine. Larry Barnett is going out right now. Eckersley say, that's it. Stop right now. You brushed Witt back. You now hit a man who just hit a home run. He is now going out and saying to Bobby Cox, the manager now, which is his responsibility, call it will out. stop right now if your man retaliates. A lot of people feel this is unfair. In other words, Eckersley could take the first shot. That's the way the rule reads. Eckersley could knock a guy down. He gets a warning. Now, if... Dave Steve retaliates, knocks somebody down in the mind. You can't read pitcher's mind. Steve and Cox could be ejected. It's an automatic fine. Barnett taking control of the game before somebody gets hurt seriously. Of course, the DH rule, as you see it again, takes away from any direct possibility of retaliation because the pitcher doesn't hit, of course. Where in the back to Mullenix, and that's what got the umpire. Larry Barnett. So and now the hitter, Alfredo Griffin, is having some words. Barnett has stepped between Alfredo and the catcher, Rich Gedman. Look at this. Alfredo says, are you calling those? Here comes the Blue Jays dugout. They're coming out now. Cox is out. Davo's out. Barfield's out. Cito's out. In case something broke loose, they were going to be there to help Alfredo. Alfredo against get but might need some help I would suggest. I'll tell you what I, I can just about I don't know for sure what Alfredo said but I'm sure Alfredo said to get that something like look Eckersley doesn't have to hit with a DH but you're gonna have to hit yeah that's how it works for that rule get hard but foul by Alfredo he just 
missed a home run that almost blew out of here for the Blue Jays third of the day. That was back in the second inning a long fly to Evans in right field. So let's hope they calm things down here a little bit. Tempers running high with Eckersley brushing wit and then hitting Rance Mullenix in the back. The danger on that pitch from the outside corner and it's strike two. So one thing you don't see quite as much as as it is years ago because the rules are much stricter. Where some people feel that a Bob Gibson or an early win, and you can name a lot of them. Sal Magley would not be able to pitch today because they knocked so many hitters down that have been thrown out of ball games. But the umpires there protecting the hitter now. Want to add early win to that list? You mentioned him. Man who said he knocked down his mother. If you had to look out. Just over top. Old strike two. Chicago White Sox the broadcast team leaving Toronto a couple of years ago. Spends much of his offseason time in Florida, which was not a benefit this year with the weather they had down there. Scramble for the third baseman Boggs, but he gets there in time. The wind swirling that around to get Griffin and the Blue Jays. Stranding Rance Monodix, the first base runner they have left today. But after three and a half, Blue Jays 5 0 lead holds. This is the Bats Blue Jay baseball on CTV. Delight when you want a meal that's good and you want a meal that's light. The king of making pizzas and they call them light delight. McCain make them with a new light tasting flaky crust and terrific toppings. So they're a good source of vitamins A, C, and iron. That means they're good tasting and good for you. Great new kind of pizza for when you're eating right. McCain make them good for you and they call them light delight. Light delight. This is the 1983 Lawn Boy Supreme, powered by an engine designed to last 50% longer than most other lawnmower engines. This Lawn Boy can do the work of five lawnmowers. It cuts, side bags, rear bags, mulches. It'll even shred leaves. Summer after summer, year after year, the hardworking five-in-one lawnmower by Lawn Boy. Lawn Boy, as time goes by, you'll know why. Get a little closer. Thanks. Don't be shy. Get a little closer. Your stop. So soon? Aerid Extra Dry. To get close, many women trust Aerid Extra Dry. They're antiperspirants. Aerid not only protects against odor, it helps fight the wetness that causes embarrassing odor. Great protection in spray, roll on, or solid. Last stop. Get a little closer. Aerid spray, roll on, or solid. Great protection against wetness. Staple had jumped on the first pitch from Dave Steve and lifted that to center fielder Lloyd Mosby for a very quick first Boston out here in the fourth inning. Coaching for the Boston Red Sox, and they have left five runners on base today, getting just two hits off Steve. With three walks are Eddie Yost and Tommy Harper, third and first respectively. Yost had a year one year where he got something like 165 hits, about 150 bases on balls about an on base percentage which is a big part of contract negotiations these days years ago if you negotiated a contract you say hey you only hit 240 or 250 if you could take in stats like that it's all changed here's Garcia making the play comfortably to Willie Upshaw to get Gedman for the second out Glenn Hoffman coming up now bullpen used to be purgatory years ago and now a good relief man a gossip or others and worth their weight in gold. Look what it did for the Cardinals having Suter. Suter another example. Before they got him they lost some almost 30 ball games in the seventh eighth and ninth inning. And after they got him they no longer lost those and that's going to be a very big key as we said earlier for this Blue Jay ball club. Who is the man's going to come out of that bullpen who's going to be the stopper for him. Joy McLaughlin Randy Moffitt Roy Lee Jackson Dave Geisel. Jim Acker has been impressive with the team this year. The guy who did it for quite a while last year was Dale Murray, now with the Yankees, although he did tail off in the final month of the season. Combined for a no hitter in spring training, quickly gone is Glenn Hoffman. Another strikeout, make it five for Dave Steve. He gets his first three up, three down inning of the ball game. Four complete, still five nothing Toronto. This is Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on CTV.
these are very serious cookies. They're made for grown-up taste. Beet trees are much too good to waste on children. Oh, they're serious. Very serious. Beet trees are extraordinarily serious cookies. If you're a grown-up, or plan to be one, you'll know what I mean. Beet trees are very serious cookies. Chevrier, Tony Kubek, and Fergie Oliver back with you. We approach the halfway mark of this ball game now. The Blue Jays getting a big four-run second inning and a five-nothing lead at this stage as Eckersley is pitching to Damaso Garcia. Ball one, top of the order. Garcia, Collins, and Upshaw for Toronto here in the fifth. Jays have only stranded one runner. That was Mullenix, who was hit by the pitcher Eckersley in the fourth inning. Boston has left five of the base pass. Two hits given up by Steve and three walks. Pitched himself out of a bad jam earlier on. And there is the first base hit. There'll be many more for Damaso Garcia in 83. That's something that is what Dom just did is so difficult for any hitter to do. You're usually way out in front of a pitcher's changeup. And Damo has that ability, gained it pretty much last year, to wait back and still at the off-speed pitch the opposite way tendency for most hitters is when you're trying to sit on a fastball you're going to pull it and you're way way out in front on the off speed pitch and he still hit it the other way. Dave Collins who's 0 for 2 struck out fly to center at a good spring training drove in four runs for the Blue Jays they want to get him on base with his speed he slashes one just past John Sullivan the coach at first base foul. It's going to be interesting we'll see the situation off and on all year long Damo stole a lot of bases last year with Collins hitting in an unusual spot he was with Cincinnati he was a leadoff hitter. And he was up there whack hacking away. Now he might be called on at times to take pitches to give Damaso a chance to steal. On that first pitch to Collins, Eckersley quick pitch. He didn't stop at all. A ball could have been called, probably should have. A strict interpretation of the rule. A lot of teams are doing that now, changing their rhythm. There he goes. There goes Garcia. Throw takes a bounce. He's got his first stolen base of the year. He stole 54 last year. That does so much. You've got the speed of a Davoso Garcia or a Collins. Good first quick crossover step, left over right. Doesn't even look, pick up the ball where he might lose a stride and a straight in, straight in slide. Many clubs are eliminating that hook slide. It takes longer to get there. They're just getting to the bag as quickly as they can. Straight in, like Henderson does, like Brock did. Look out, pick off. Pete Rose used to do face first. Collins will have an adjustment to make hitting behind Garcia in the number two spot. He's got him now where he can drive him in at second base. Two strikes to Collins. Takes it high. Ball one. One and two. Six hits off Eckersley now. Two were big blows. Mullenix and Upshaw home run. Damo is getting a lot of room around second base. He's taking a little bit of a walking lead. And that'll drop for a base hit. Waving Garcia home. Good strong throw. Oh, go back to third base. Safe. Collins reaches second. Second and third. Nobody out. But a close call for Garcia there. Jimmy Rice made a mistake. Jimmy Williams was trying to hold Damo up with nobody out. Dabo took a big turn, and when Jimmy Rice overthrew his cutoff man, Wade Boggs, Collins saw it, went to second base to remove the double play possibility. Now Hawks out. Watch Dabo. You don't have to have a very strong arm in left field in Fenway. He's running right through Jimmy Williams' side. Now, an overthrow the cutoff man, a fundamental lapse by Jim Rice, and Collins very alertly keeps on going, removes the double play possibility. Eckersley now will leave the ball game. You can see when he gets that ball, he's just a little over 200 feet away from home plate left field. He overthrew him. Boggs tried to decoy, and then Damo got back. Bruce Hurst is going to come in now to relieve Dennis Eckersley with nobody out, and the Blue Jays with five-run lead with two men on base. This is the first test of a Boston Red Sox bullpen that many feel might be suspect that it'll be Hurst as the trial run man right here in this first game in relief of Dennis Eckersley. Who got stung early by the Blue Jays. We talked about the uh, two home runs, a total of seven hits he gave up. Got himself into hot water in the second and third innings, and here in the fifth, 
to cue his exit. So Collins at second base, Damaso Garcia at third base. And before the ball game, Fergie Oliver had a little conversation with Dave Collins, the man on second base, as we look at Hurst. Fergie talked to Dave Collins. Dave Collins, with your speed, do you have the green light to run on your own? Well, we got a signal where, you know, it'll be uh, decided from Bobby in the dugout that he wants me to run or not. And uh, I think they got me over here to, uh, you know, they got Domaso leading off and myself hitting second, and I think they want me to run a lot. And when the situation in the game arises, I'll try to try to run. It's been said now, Dave, that you're going to play 81 games at home on artificial turf. It's been said that that'll put 30 to 40 points in your batting average. Do you believe that? I think it will, probably, because... Uh, my stroke is adjusted to artificial surface, and uh, I hit a lot of balls on the ground and uh, a lot of balls on the line. I've got a real short stroke, and I feel that uh, i got a good stroke for artificial surface. Dave Collins, as you look at Bruce Hurst, who had a pretty good spring, Tony, 2-1 uh, and one with a 129 earned run average in training camp games out of uh, Winter Haven, Florida, the Red Sox home. He's a left-hander, and, of course, they're putting him in now to face Willie Upshaw, who hits from the left side. He's the man who is... Well, everybody's surprised that he is out here on the mound for opening day. Had elbow surgery, had some bone chips removed by Dr. Pappas, the team physician for the uh, Red Sox. It was way back in late last October. They thought he might come back maybe the middle of this year to be able to pitch. And he just worked so hard and really had to go through a lot of painful throwing. And here he is in the opening day ball game. The infield will play in now with runners on second and third to try and cut the run off at home plate. Upshaw is fly to right and homered off Dennis Eckersley, who's responsible for these two runners, the five in already for Toronto with this 5 0 Blue Jay lead. It was a change, and it's taken for ball one by Willie Upshaw. First best pitch probably is his breaking ball, his curveball. And if he can get a hitter looking for the curveball, it makes his fastball look that much better. Never been much of a strikeout pitcher. Cut foul by Willie. On deck is Cliff Johnson. He'll hit from the right side, of course. Last year with Boston, first was three wins, seven losses with ERA. There's Cliff Johnson. ERA up around six, just beneath it. Upshaw trying to get the ball in the outfield. Nobody out. Trying to get the sacrifice fly. 1 1 floats inside. It's two balls and a strike. has become much more of a patient hitter. You just can't buy experience, can you? I think it'll tell a lot, not only with Upshaw this year, but Barfield, Mosby, some of the young pitchers. Right back through the pitching. Pitcher, and it'll be a 6-0 lead, and now a 7-0 lead as they hold the throw. Blue Jays romping over the Red Sox here in Boston as they bring home the two-man Eckers we left and a sharp single up the middle by Willie Upshaw. Interesting to see how that play can affect the ball club. Rice overthrowing the cutoff, taking the double play away. The infield end was forced to come in. And when the infield comes in, it obviously cuts down the amount of territory that they can uh, cover. And the ball can sneak through much easier. There is the story with Willie Upshaw having driven in three of the Blue Jays' seven runs so far. Cliff Johnson singled and fly to right. Take strike one. Nobody out still here in the Toronto fifth inning. Seven nothing certainly would appear to be a comfortable lead, but this is a very unforgiving park to pitchers. As we have seen before. Uh, it is just incredible to predict what can happen late in the ball game. In fact, last year the Red Sox came back in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning from behind something like 35 or six times when they won it when they came back and won the ball game. And they did an awful lot of that in the ninth inning. Including, as we said last year, when they trailed the Jays 7-1. to one. Came back and won at 8-7. You take nothing for granted here at Fenway. Strike two call to Johnson. One and two. The left field wall does not forgive many pitchers' mistakes in this ballpark. Those 320-foot five balls we play Al Screeno with here in left center field. 315 down the line. One time measured by Whitey Ford a number of years ago. And he said, you're kidding. It's only 300 according to my tape measure. Inside, two and two. 
It's about as hard as we've seen Hurst throw. As you said, bone chips will prevent him from uh, really throwing hard frequently. Small Cup last uh, lost Bergmeier from the left side out of their bullpen last year, so they've got John Henry Johnson, but Hurst could fit into that picture from the left side of the bullpen, which is the strength of this pitching staff. Mark Clear, Bob Stanley, Aponte. Hauk used that bullpen so masterfully last year, Don, where he never allowed one of his relief pitchers to go two consecutive days. Only one time all last year. He wanted to keep him well rested. The runner was going. Stayed out of a double play. They get Johnson. Vance up shot a second with one out now. For Jesse Barfield. This crowd here at Fenway has not had much to cheer about. Like the clouds have rolled in now, not threatening clouds, but the sunshine we had earlier is pretty much gone. Still mild, though. Sharp contrast to opening day a year ago, which was to have been opening day. Detroit, the Eastern Seaboard, Boston, New York, set back several days before they got their first ball games in by a major snowstorm. Barfield has doubled and struck out. Jay right fielder takes ball one from Bruce Hurst, relief of Dennis Eckersley. And down with first base open and Hurst pitching to the right-hander Barfield. And two left-handers to follow Witten Mosby. I would rather doubt if you give Barfield anything too good to hit. One of those situations where it might not be an intentional walk, give him four, but say, hey, if you're going to hit something, you're going to hit a ball. We put you on. We've got two left-handers coming up. Although Bobby Cox could pinch it for Witt. Martinez. Oh, Flags flags it down. The long throw is there. Two away. Holding at second base is Willie Upshot. There was a sign of the inexperience of a young Blue Jay player. Barfield goes 2-0. and all. First throws him a sinker ball beneath the knees. And Jesse had just thought about a little bit. I know he's very anxious to drive in the run. Chances are Hurst with a walk. You didn't throw many strikes. He jumped on it and he's gone. He was so ahead of Hurst, he just waited in the area that he wanted. But that's an experience. It'll come with Jesse. He's a smart kid. It's the kind of experience that Upshaw is showing now in his patience that Barfield has yet to learn. Strike taken by the catcher Ernie Witt. He's one for two, but drove in two runs in the second with a single to center field. Blue Jays got four in that second inning, one more in the third. They've scored two thus far here in the fifth inning. Now Hurst has come in to retire Johnson and Barfield on ground balls back to back. Leans back from the pitch that is inside. It is one and one. Lloyd Mosby will hit next for Toronto here in the fifth. Side ball two. Variety Club's baseball back in town luncheon is scheduled at the concert hall, the Royal York Hotel, 11:30. It starts on Friday. So we want to welcome the Blue Jays back. It's $15 a person. Contact the Variety Club in Toronto. It's become a popular annual event on the eve of the home opener this year against the Yankees Saturday at 1:30. Shortstop gathers it in. Glenn Hoffman. Witt is gone, and so are the Blue Jays, who got their first three men on with hits. Last three in a row ground balls engineered by pitcher Hurst. This is Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Chow, chow, chow. The kitten in your cat may be looking for a tasty treat. Chow, chow, chow. But the cat in your cat needs the nutritional goodness of Purina Cat Chow. chow, chow, chow. Cat Chow is all the protein, vitamins, and minerals your cat needs for a long, healthy life. So keep the kitten in your cat by giving him everything he needs to feel healthy and full of life. Chow, chow, chow. Purina Cat Chow. Chow, chow, chow. You know there are times when you could use a little something extra to help keep you going. Like a 
delicious Mars bar. It can help you get through active times when you need it. Thick milk chocolate, caramel, nougat, they're all in there, and the 264 calories help keep you going. Hey, we have nowhere to have to go. Mars bar helps keep you going. You know how it is when you get a cold. You don't want to be near people, and they don't want to be near you. Faisal Royale three-ply facial tissue covers your cold three ways. You get a layer of softness, a layer of strength, and an extra layer of protection for you and the people around you. If you're near people, cover your cold with Royale facial tissue. Royale, the one, two, three-ply facial tissue. Steve. Three years with the Blue Jays, what a pitcher he has blossomed into, one of the best in the American League. 17 and 14 last year, and in command here with a whopping 7-0 lead as he pitches for the Boston Red Sox here in the fifth inning. Ralph Houck, his team in trouble, but as Tony says in Fenway, big leads can disappear in a real hurry. Valdez, the first hitter, pops it up. Win may keep it in. It does, Back into the mid of Ernie Witt. I think they're not having fun in Shea Stadium in that National League. S few Cy Young awards, those two starting pitchers. Steve Calton and Tom Seaver going into the sixth with no score. Mm, this lefty got five Cy Young. It's old folks day, wherever the Phillies go. Aptly named Veteran Stadium back in Philadelphia. Though Pete Rose says it's Experience Stadium. That's what we have going for us. Wade Boggs is 0 for 2, a couple of infield brown balls, leadoff hitter for the Red Sox with one out in the Boston fifth. One strike to him. One and one now. Ted Williams saw Boggs a couple of years ago in spring training, and he said, someday this kid's going to lead the league. Showed you what he hit last year when he came up, about 340. 349 at 311 this year in spring training. This is a great park for left-handed hitters. You always think it's good for right-handers. If you look at the guys who've led leagues here, the, the, the big thing they've got going, obviously, is they're good hitters to start with. Williams and Yastrzemski and Billy Goodman. Brett Lynn, when he was here. Some people feel that uh, this ballpark means 30 or 40 points to a player's average. Depends upon the hitter. About 30 or 40 gray hairs to every pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. I like Ted Williams hit about 25 points higher lifetime here in Fenway than he did on the road. Full count. It's high. So Steve issues another pass this time to Wade Boggs, the Red Sox leadoff hitter. Fourth walk that Dave's given up. He hadn't walked anybody since the third until just now. Third time the leadoff hitter's been on against Dave. So far, he's gotten away with it. He let that happen to Dwight Evans, but he walked him in the third. Evans had a single in the first inning. He'll face him now. It's quite a story with Evans. He has one son who has, and I don't know the medical term, it's called elephant man's disease at home. He's lost his sight in one eye. His younger son has an inoperable brain tumor. And uh, somehow, and I don't know how a man could do it, you wonder. It's better how he can put that out of his mind and go to the plate. But he said, the kids are doing fine. The fa our family life has never been better. He's quite a courageous athlete. Aside from that, he's been hit in the head a couple of times, once by Nolan Ryan, which also almost cost him his career. For a while there, he played about a month of the season where he couldn't look up. He lost his equilibrium after getting hit in the head. Check swing foul. I think he hit the bat twice. He did. It's ruled a foul ball. The quick throw, though, by Ernie Witt. Larry Barnett making a very quick, decisive call. Did it's that batter while he's still in the batter's box? Or the ball unintentionally rolls into the bat. Here it is. A dead ball. Chopped out. I, tell you, I didn't see it hit anything. Ernie questioned it, but not too strenuously. What did that hit? I didn't oh, see it. Was it. fair territory. Tell you, replays are marvelous things, but I didn't see it hit the, the player or the bat. Doesn't matter now. He's gone on the strikeout. One more look at that previous pitch. Just jammed it right down. Look at the action on that ball at sinker. Hasn't hit anything yet. Now the bat comes down. Hasn't hit it yet. But it's a moot point because Evans is punched out by Steve. Strikeout number six for Steve. 
Box at first. Jim Rice is over two. He has fanned him and most of the ground out. He fouls it away. Strike one to Rice. Red Sox have stranded five base runners. The Blue Jays made the most of their opportunities. They've left but two. Look out. He got Rice's shoulder. And now Jimmy's going Rice. out. Rice has gone out. Right Rice has been hit on the wrist. Here Rick come Rondo. both teams. Here they we go. got a brouhaha. One of the umpires tackling Rice. Pulling him away from the scene. And Bobby Cox, right in the middle of it, is going to straighten it out. Say, you hit one of my guys, throw it another, brush him back, and we come close to you and nick you on the shoulder, and you come out charging my pitcher. All four umpires very alertly. Ken Kaiser, a former professional rusher, right. <laughs> has Jim Rice from the back and just pinned his arms to his side. That's no contest, but Kaiser's got you. It will be interesting now if in the judgment, in the judgment of the home plate umpire, Barnett, if in his judgment he cannot read minds, Steve intentionally threw at Rice, Steve is out of the ball game. After Apparently the he says, he ah, gave. and it was not intentional. We've had a little excitement. Dale Ford now getting a new ball for Steve. The count was one ball and two strikes. And Steve just has a fastball run inside. Watch Rice take this pitch. He almost ducks into it. It got his shoulder, maybe even the bill of his helmet. He was really diving into the ball. And he comes up as Barnett says, it hit him. You've got first base. And Jimmy Rice says, look out. Rice, a couple of years ago, got hit on the wrist. He missed part of a World Series, in fact. And had a bone crack. Now Hawk is coming up to talk to Barnett. Says, I want Steve out of the ball game. He is arguing right now, saying he is supposed to be out according to the rule. And Barnett, I'm sure, is saying, uh-uh, he did not throw intentionally. The, rough, the, the umpire has the discretion. Well, he went out when Eckersley hit Mullenix. He went out and warned Steve and warned Cox. Now Hawk wants Steve out of the ball game. And he talked himself out if he continues. You think Ralph Houck is a little bit upset? Look at him. Don, I'm going to let you go to page 65 in the rule book, rule 802, and tell let our fans decide. And again, you cannot read a pitcher's mind whether it's intentional or not. It's about an intentional pitch of the batter. It says if in the umpire's judgment such a violation occurs, the umpire is to warn the pitcher and his manager that another such pitch will mean immediate expulsion of the pitcher. At the same time, the umpire shall warn the opposing manager that such an infraction by his pitcher shall result in that pitcher's expulsion. But That's what it's in the umpire's that. judgment. That's the key phrase. If in his judgment there's another such pitch during the game, by any pitcher, the umpire shall eject the pitcher from the game. Well, Barnett did not think it was an intentional hitting of uh, Jim Rice. It just nicked it. But boy, it's got Rice upset, as you saw, his manager Hout and Poppy Cox very calmly, or at least outwardly, looking at the scene here at Fenway Park. Bring you up to date the Red Sox with Rice being hit by the pitch and him at first base. Boggs over at second, two out for Tony Armas, who fouls the pitch back, strike one. And these are things that smolder throughout the course of a season. This will not be a forgotten incident. It might be forgotten today or this series, but it seems like pitchers and hitters keep in the back of their mind incidents such as this. And it may be down the road somewhere, but there may still be retaliation along the way. And one each way, Eckersley hitting Mullenix, Steve. Hitting Rice. Here's the ground ball to the shortstop. Griffin, the force of second. Hey, no! Hey. Everybody safe. That was a tough play for Alfredo Griffin. Damaso saying he thought he had him on a bang-bang play. I, for a second, I thought that was going to be Rance Mullenick's ball because Damo was playing Armas up the middle and very deep for his power. He had to come a long way to his right and then make the off-balance throw. Going against him. He felt he had no chance to make the long throw across his body to get Armas. I'll tell you, from that angle, that is awfully close. Dalbo starts to put the ball away. He thinks he had him. Anyway, with two outs, now the bases are loaded, and that man's up. And this crowd, that man, Yastrzemski, is making as much noise now as when they first introduced Yaz in the starting lineups. They've been quiet since then. Strike one, Yastrzemski. The second really tough inning that Dave Steve has had. 
Yeah, the base is loaded. Earlier, with just one out, that was in the second. Cox now is his bu uh, bullpen out. Popped up, infield, here comes Griffin. He'll make the play, and that'll be it as for the second time of the game, the Red Sox have left the bases loaded. As Steve gets out of it, misses the bat. Blue Jays baseball on CT Lee. With more than just calories Get a drink and box of fruit juice Reconstituted fruit juice From McCain Introducing McCain Drinking Boxes, 100% pure orange and apple juice from Concentrate. Refreshing McCain fruit juice from Concentrate is more than just calories, and the sweetness comes from pure fruit. New McCain Drinking Boxes, pure fruit sweetness, no sugar added, refreshing anytime. Quench that thirst, get a drinking box of fruit juice from McCain. Somebody hears he's got a problem. Somebody's worried about his soul. Somebody hopes it's nothing major. I know where to go. Be somebody. Come to Speedy. A clamp. A simple clamp. And they didn't even charge me. Speedy took me straight to the problem and not to the cleaners. Be somebody. Speedy. Come to Speedy. This summer, you can have the best-looking lawn in the neighborhood, and Highway Market's got what it takes. Vigoro Ultra Lawn Fertilizer 26-3. It's new this year from Vigoro and has a controlled, time-released, high-nitrogen formula for a luxurious, healthy lawn all summer long. Save this week on Vigoro Ultra. The 9-kilogram bag is now just $12.98, enough to cover 425 square meters. Remember, with every purchase, you receive free use of a fertilizer spreader. Vigoro Ultra, at a great saving, all this week at your Kitchener Highway Market. Here in the sixth inning from Hurst. Slashes this one for a base hit past the glove of Valdez. Mosby one for three on the day. Leads off the sixth inning with a single for Toronto with Rance Mullenix coming up now who's been hit by the pitcher and his homer driving in two runs. It's interesting with Lloyd. They, he's got that hitch in his swing where he's hitching when the ball's in the strike. So a lot of good hitters had hitches, but they get the hitch out of the way. Any movement of the hands, that's what a hitch is. Uh, before the ball's in the hitting area. Mosby doesn't hitch as much against left-handers he does against right. It actually hurts him against right-handed pitchers. It's really, I've never seen it before with any hitters. The only reason I bring it up. Uh, there's something about his mental makeup or something about the way he stands at the plate he changes his pattern of hitting. It's a left or right-handed pitcher. Mullenix, who got an assist as Upshaw did with a home run to right center field, won't get that much of a boost now as that flag is quite limp by comparison. Not blowing out nearly as much as it was earlier. Gets it the other way, but foul. One ball and one strike. Mosby at first with his base hit. Griffin on deck. Nobody out in the Toronto six. The Blue Jays lead seven to nothing. They about hit the Boston Red Sox nine to two on opening day. There's the board. The historic board here at Fenway Park in left field. And Steve has reached that point early in the season coming out of spring training where they're going to be concerned about his arm and numbers of pitches. So Bobby Cox has two men going in his bullpen. Dave Geisel, the bearded one with the left-handed pitcher, and Roy Lee Jackson, the right-handed pitcher. It's going to be a very, very important part of this Blue Jay team for 162 game schedule. A big difference where they're going to finish, how that bullpen produces. That'll be the key. The bench is obviously stronger. With Orta down there, Cliff Johnson, Mickey Klutz can help you from the right side, filling it short on occasion, third base, DH once in a while. How many ball games are won and lost out of that bullpen? Would be the difference between maybe fourth place or seventh place. And to go with that bench, you you've got the likes of Barry Bunnell. Yeah. Bigger to be in the regular line. Oscar Powell, Powell swing Powell. the bat for you on occasion. You need a good bench and a good bullpen. I'm talking about wins and losses on the bullpen. I probably should mention saves more importantly. They can prevent that team from going ahead late in the ball game. Look out. Bottle next to Hoff on the shortstop. They get the double play. First of the day. Two Red's, gone for Griffin. Red Sox turned a lot of double plays last year with Huffman and Remy. A couple of years ago, the Red Sox and Blue Jays tied for the lead in that department of the American League. It's one thing they were worried about with Valdez while he's filling in for Remy, whether or not he can make the double play. 
He's basically in his career in the minor leagues and major leagues, but a shortstop third baseman for the Red Sox. Strike to Alfredo, who's 0 for 2. He has flied to right and popped up to the third baseman, Boyd. Spring training was good for him, though, beating out Fernandez. He hit 313 down there. Be a tough play. Alfredo split this. Oh, they got him. Might have got him there in time. That was close. Fine play by Hoffman. So the Blue Jays are gone quickly in the top half of the sixth inning, leading 7 0. This is the bat. Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Everybody who's somebody is singing and dancing tonight. It's totally electric, a musical dance explosion. It's the Charlottetown Festival's new smash hit, Singing and Dancing Tonight, sponsored by IBM Canada Limited. This is the hit which the Toronto Star says is a natural to entertain all of Canada. Singing and Dancing Tonight, presented by CKCO, CFCA, and CKKW at the Centre in the Square, April 19th to 23rd. Move right out of here. Cutting out for our place. Really glad we're here. Me and the boys and our 50. A cold, easy drink and 50. Sometimes nothing goes better. Me and the boys and our beer. Kit Kat Pure Milk Chocolate Bar. We're for you, we're for you. Crispy Wafer Center Bar. We're for you, we're for you. Kit Kat's four neat bars in one, some for me, some for you. It's a treat for everyone, it's for me, it's for you. Kit Kat bars are made to share, share with me, share with you. Gotta share, it's only fair, three for me, one for you. Dave Staple to the first baseman starts the sixth inning for the Red Sox. They're down 7-0. They've been out hit 9-2. After Staple had come, Getman the catcher and Hoffman the shortstop. Crunched high, left field, way upstairs there, that 37-foot wall. He has cleared it. Well, the Red Sox are on the board of the leadoff home run by Dave Stapleton here in the sixth inning. Seven to one ball game. Steve with a fastball inside part of the plate about belt high. There it is, tailed in but didn't sink. Dave was hoping that that wind blowing across from left to right would keep it in the ballpark. This is the out of play. The long foul by Gedman for strike one. Hoffman on deck. So for the fourth time today, the lead runner, lead hitter, has reached base. This time, Stapleton covered all four of them. Two strikes to get. You know, Steve, so far in this ballgame, has not thrown a lot of straight changes. One spring training out we saw him. He threw quite a few just working on it. He had trouble finishing on the pitch. Here's the appeal. Third yep. base umpire calls it a strike. Rocky Rowe. This can be a very dangerous part to throw change-ups in the right-handed hitters if you don't have it. It's a finesse pitch, and early in the season, Steve and Whit may not want to go to it as often. At seven strikeouts now for Dave Steve. Pitching to Hoffman here. He struck him out of the fourth inning. Hoffman single to the second. A run in on the home run by Stapleton. Nobody on base. One out Red Sox. The bottom of the sixth. They're down seven to one. They've been out hit nine to three. And the big story for Boston is they have left eight runners on the base pass. Base is loaded twice. Jays have stranded just two. Off the end of the bat, rolling down to Willie Upshaw. He'll take it himself. He two guard. He just knocked the bat right out of Huffman's hand, didn't he? It yeah, shows you the character of Steve, how he could bounce back from giving up a home run, bounce back earlier in the second inning, was struggling, pitched himself out of that. Tough competitor. Most of the times with a manager, but or a pitching coach, but more likely the catcher who has the best viewpoint will look for a change in the pitcher's delivery to see if he's tiring. The pitches start getting up in the strike zone. Look out, Don. They look for his delivery. 
the first thing that will tire usually uh, his legs are in good shape will be the shoulder when the shoulder gets a little tired the arm starts dropping down a little bit the arm drops down a little bit the slider and the curveball get the flattening out the sinker doesn't sink as much you see right there he tried to overthrow a breaking ball didn't get on top of it and the ball just hung upstairs one and one of all day as we'll check with our statistician Doug Kelcher to see how many pitches Steve has thrown he did take them down he threw an awful lot on the first three innings up to 50 and had a seven pitch inning the thing about Steve now I think he's got enough experience and he's smart enough now that even when he starts losing his stuff he can pitch to locations and still get hitters out there's another pitch up lazy ground ball for Garcia and that'll do it. Steve just threw his 104th pitch, in case you're wondering this afternoon. Stapleton's home run does it. It's 7-1. This is LeBan's Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Beef ravioli. Beef ravioli. Beef ravioli. Chef Boyardee beef ravioli. Man-sized pasta patties filled with the finest beef. Smothered in rich, tasty tomato sauce. Lovingly prepared, lovingly served. Hi, Mom. Welcome home. Lunch is ready. Chef Boyardee beef ravioli. Wholesome, nourishing food. Now, buy any one of these specially marked products and get one game of bowling. Absolutely free. Yeah. Hold it. You ain't going home just yet. I got me a big muffler problem here, boy, and you top guns are going to fix it. Ah, yes. Very fast. Very professional. Now, what's in this for me? What's this? Midas muffler guarantee, Sheriff. Now, ah, that's real cute, boy. No, sir. Just real good. Esther Newman will test dishwasher all against her usual brand. Listen. Esther, what do you think of all? Nothing can get my dishes cleaner. They can't. They, they, they can't because they, the dishes cannot be improved upon. I mean, you can't get cleaner than clean. You can't get shinier than shine. Just look at it. So what's the answer? The answer is to use dishwasher all, for me, anyway. With all, my dishes are clean. They are fantastic. All in my dishwasher go together like a good marriage. Quickly, Damaso Garcia just got a fraction of the ball, pounded it down to the right of the mound. Off went uh, Bruce Hurst to collect it and throw him out at first base. So quickly, one gone, Blue Jays in the seventh inning. You know, Don Damo uh, has put on about 10 pounds since the end of last season. I don't, he's, he's young enough and his legs are strong enough. I don't think it'll affect the speed that much, but you gotta wonder even at that age if a little bit of the quickness will be gone. Dave Here's Collins, that. one for three, that's outside to him. Sure didn't appear that way when Dom was still second base back in the fifth, though. Looked in 82 season four of doing that. As you know, Collins can motor as well when he gets on base. He has scored one of the seven Blue Jay runs today. They lead seven to one, hitting here in the top half of the seventh inning. Dave Collins, a man, we talked about how intense he is a couple of years back. He had an old friend who's a hypnotist. Talked to him to try and increase his focus on the baseball and improve his concentration. I don't know if he's done it. Oh, good curveball for us. I don't know if he's done it lately, but one time in Cincinnati a couple of years ago when I talked to him about it, he called his hypnotist coast to coast and put the receiver on his pillow next to his bed and the man soothed him almost to sleep. They ever get those, game has changed. <laughs> ever get those radio receivers and the helmets you've been seeing down at spring training, you talk to him directly. Right now, he's on his own and he's gone. Second strikeout for Collins today. And the first for Bruce Hurst is coming in for Dennis Eckersley. Tailing fastball started inside the plate. Look at Gedman, how he just kind of caresses that ball back toward the corner of the plate. Well, he's had quite a day. He homered in the third. And then with a single, drove in two more in the fifth inning. So he's driven in three of the seven Toronto runs. Fly to right the first. An exciting opening day, and it's some fireworks and almost a couple of brawls. But if you're a Red Sox fan, it's been a pretty tame opening day. Just three hits and one run so far for the home team. And not a good outing by their 
ace Dennis Eckersley was tagged hard by the Jays. And three hits. I was surprised he did not give Armas a hit on that one ball when Rice beat the throw. They gave the fielder's choice. But this will be three, close. No, three rows in. It's a scorer's judgment on that, and apparently uh, in the judgment of uh, the scorer, he didn't think that Alfredo, or he thought that Alfredo could have gotten Armas at first base. I, I think I don't like that judgment. Well, especially when he couldn't get the man at second base. Put it up first, then took it out. There's Bob Stanley, who set that record last year for innings pitched out of the bullpen. Sox counting heavily on him again this year. He was outstanding last year. Look out if it's he fair. He punched that, but it's curving. It's foul ball. He didn't miss that pull by very much down there in right field, which juts out from the actual right field fence. Yeah. Fergie and I were talking about this uh, before the ball game, and I know you probably noticed this too. I don't know how many of the Blue Jays, I know Mosby did, Barfield did, and Willie Upshaw did also. They all worked either Nautilus or mild lifting equipment, and every one of them came down to spring training this year with bigger upper bodies. Willie Upshaw's another one. He's got biceps on him now, and Barfield the same way. Man, he's gigantic. He's got to pay off for him. Yeah, that's the old theory. I know Sparky Anderson last year wanted his catcher perish not to lift weights. Parrish is into heavyweights as is Downing from the California Angels. On the full count, it'll be a tough play. Valdez gathers it in. He makes it smartly, beating Upshaw by a step. Three up, three down, Toronto in the top of the seventh inning. They hold that 7-1 lead over the Red Sox. This is LeVance, Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Budweiser salutes all the people who help us go in the snow. Our best for you. There's no one else who goes in class the way you do. For all you do. Our best for you. Yeah, this Bud's for you if you like your beer with that distinctively clean, crisp Beachwood Age taste and smoothness that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. Cavities. Did you know that seven out of ten cavities occur here in the back teeth? That's why you need this the Reach toothbrush. Reach is angled like a dental instrument to reach back teeth and help prevent cavities, especially those seven out of ten cavities that occur in your back teeth. Remember the name Reach. Now cavity prevention is within your reach. The original compact head and the new longer head reach. I'm Bill McBean, hobby chef, and I'm very particular about one thing, the oil I use. I insist on only one oil, Unico. It's 100% pure sunflower oil. I know I can count on it to bring out the natural flavor of my foods. It's very light. But there's another reason I use Unico. It contains 65% polyunsaturates and only 12% saturates. Unico searched the world to bring you the best and found it right here in Canada. Royley Jackson has come on to relieve Dave Steve. We threw 104 pitches, limited the Red Sox to a run and three hits. Now with the meat of this Boston lineup coming into the seventh inning, Jackson, who was extremely hot in spring training, he had a .63 earned run average, went 3-0, and pitched 14 in the third innings. That's his story from last year. So pretty, good, pretty good numbers there, down. Innings pitched 97, less hits than innings pitched, but I like that 71 strikeouts to 97 innings pitched. I think Roy Lee, when he would come into the middle of innings sometime, and get himself in trouble by walking or getting behind that first hitter. If he can learn to, to get ahead of that first hitter in an inning, or when he comes in with somebody on base to get ahead of that hitter, he could be the guy who could emerge as the star of that bullpen. He'll pitch to Wade Boggs, White Evans, and Jim Rice here. He was kidding us before the game. He was never on as the Labatt's player of the game last year. He intends to be on many times this year. In fact, we'll have that Labatt's player of the game for you when this one is over. Willie Upshaw, leading candidate right now, having driven in three of the Blue Jays' seven runs. Boggs 0 for 2, as you see. He got his pass in the fifth inning from Dave Steve. Steve struck out seven. Pretty good outing for him. Got himself into a jam a couple of times. Pitched his way out, but they obviously feel he is thrown enough at 104. I think he was tired in the sixth inning, but Bobby Cox knew he was facing the tail end of the order. He got some balls up, and they weren't going to take him deep, although Stapleton did. Into that win. Two balls and a strike to Wade Boggs, the Red Sox third baseman. 
Bobby Cox. Jim Clancy, who is probably going to go back down to Florida to get some innings pitched. He had a late start awaiting the birth of child number four. Lifted lazily to Dave Collins in left field, and there's one away. I'll tell you, the, uh, the depth in the starting staff that got and Morgan pitched the way they did in spring training is just going to be outstanding. And you hear opposing hitters talk and super scouts traveling around in spring training. You've got five potential starters for the Blue Jays who are like 90-plus miles per hour. You know, whether they can throw strikes, whether strikes when it counts is another story. Scott Evans. Garth Scott should look, should look good this year, didn't he? Yeah, he, he, he won the spot, literally, against Morgan. 21 consecutive scoreless innings thrown up by Jim Gott. Evans has struck out, singled, and walked. That last put out by Collins, his first as a Blue Jay, is the first handled by the left fielder in the ballgame here in the seventh inning. Seven runs, nine hits for Toronto. Red Sox run in three hits. Airless baseball played so far on opening day here at Fenway Park in Boston. A mile high. Here's Monolix pointing it out for El Cueto as he backpedals to make the second out. Blue Jays bullpen gets up and starts throwing once again. right-handers out there now. Geisel had been up earlier. Here's Rice, who was riled in the fifth inning when he was nicked by a pitch from Dave Steed. You mentioned weight gain by Domiso Garcia. Well, Royley Jackson lost 20 pounds coming into this season. Round goes Rice. Jackson pitches effectively in relief of Steve here with two gone, nobody on on the Boston seventh. Before he was hit by that pitch, where he struck out and grounded out to third. As Tony said, the key to the Blue Jays and how far they do go is the bullpen, and it's getting an early indication of good news from what Roy Lee Jackson has done into his third hitter here in the seventh inning. Interesting to see how Rice's numbers have changed since he came up in 75 with Freddie Lynn. For the first four years, he was striking out 124 or more times per season. Last year he was still at 98. He's, he's become a little more disciplined every year. He's never going to be a big base on balls, guys, because he has pretty good bat control. One of the rarities in power hitters who still hit for average. One ball, two strikes, two away. Rice just check swing the foul. Blue Jays have activity in their bullpen. Jim Acker, the newcomer, and, and Randy, Randy Moffitt. Moffitt. Former Houston Astros, San Francisco Giant. Right-hander is warming. I'd say Moffitt's lucky to be here. He had some kind of rare parasite. The doctor said only two people in the history had ever had it. They never, never even had a name. That's how rare it was. Jim Rice has struck out. Second time today, and that ends the Boston seventh inning. Seven complete. Seven to one. The Blue Jays lead the Red Sox. This is the Bats Blue Jays baseball on CTV. <laughs> Wendy Henry on rising costs, shrinking budgets, and maple leaf. Grocery shopping has never been more of a challenge. With costs rising and budget shrinking, it isn't easy to get the quality you want at the price you want. That's why I buy maple leaf. I know maple leaf puts their best into everything they make. So I get great taste every time, and at a price I can live with. If you buy maple leaf, you know what I mean. If you don't, try it and see. It's today's wise choice. Francis Ford Coppola presents the classic novel by S.E. Hinton, The Outsiders, with Matt Dillon as Dallas, Ralph Macchio as Johnny, C. Thomas Howell as Ponyboy, Patrick Swayze as Daryl, Diane Lane as Cherry, Leif Garrett as Bob, and Rob Lowe as Soda Pop. In a story about winning your independence and finding your identity, The Outsiders. Held over at the cinema downtown Kitchener and the Cambridge Cinema Number 1. Looks good, Pat. Who wants gum? I do. Me too, please. Give your family good tasting Trident sugarless gum. Recommended for families who don't want to chew sugar when they chew gum. Trident has all the flavor with no sugar, so there's no risk of sugar damage to your family's teeth. So set a good example with Trident sugarless gum. All the flavor but no sugar. Trident, for families who don't want to chew sugar when they chew gum. 
Cliff Johnson is one for three on the day. Takes the first pitch downstairs from Bruce Hurst. And Fergie talked with Cliff Johnson earlier. Pops this up in the meantime. Center fielder Tony Armas coming on, and Johnson is gone. You know, Don, it'll be interesting to see what Cliff Johnson does with the Blue Jays this year. He's never really in the major leagues hit in a hitter's ballpark for a right-handed hitter. He was in Houston for a long time, which is Death Valley. Yankee Stadium, which is death to right-handed hitters. Cleveland, which is not a real good hitter's park. He was with the Cubs for just about 168 at-bats. But he's now in a hitter's ballpark in Toronto. Artificial surface and reachable fences. He's got a chance to put some numbers on the board if he stays healthy. Now we'll get a chance to talk with him at a future time. Barfield, a double and three at bat, slashes that foul. Ball and a strike to Jesse. Blue Jays got the jump early. They got four runs in the second and one on the third, two more in the fifth inning. Stapleton's home run, the only reply for Boston, that came in the sixth. Ernie Witts on deck. Here's Hurst with the 1-1 on his way to Barfield, called strike two. Tudor and Leal set to go on Thursday. Barfield slow rolling ball down to Glenn Hoffman. His quick throw there in plenty of time. Two away. Ralph Hoff may feel that Bruce Hurst has had enough coming off the elbow surgery. Surgery. He may go to the bullpen for the ninth inning. He's got a couple of guys throwing. John Henry Johnson is the left-hander. And it is Luis Aponte, the right-hander from all angles. Johnson last year, he, he was with Texas a couple of years ago. Pretty hard thrower. Got a good fork ball. Hawk would like to have him replace Tom Bergmeier, who's over at Oakland. Gave him a free agent. Nobody on. Two out for Ernie Witt. He takes a strike as he leans away. He was brushed back to start the day's hostilities by Dennis Eckersley. He got a big base hit way back in the second with two men on base. Johnson and Barfield. Single up the middle, two RBIs. The it's upshaw seem, has three. It's got to seem strange to Ernie. He didn't hit against left-handers too often last year. A couple of times in spring training this year. His hit came off the right-hander, Eckersley. Slash that high and foul, third base side. One and two to Ernie Witt. Oily Jackson, effective coming in that last inning in relief of Steve, got the side out in order. He's got himself through, well, three-fifths of the power of the Boston Red Sox. Must still face Armas, Jastrzemski, and Stapleton, who has the Sox-only homer in the next inning, and that'll come up very quickly as Ernie Wood is called out on strikes. Second strikeout for Hurst. We now move to the Red Sox half of inning number eight. This is the Bats Blue Jays baseball on CTV. How many cars does it take to fill five acres? See for yourself during our spring extravaganza. Hundreds of cars and trucks are arriving. Believe me, you can believe it. Holland, Holland, Chevrolet, Oldsmobile. And of the hundreds, what tops the list? The elusive cut list, so much in demand, so rarely found until now. Holland's got them, ready for immediate delivery. Buying or leasing your key to an 83 car or truck is waiting at Holland Chevrolet, Plains Road and Branch Street, Burlington. See Holland. Now. Rice-a-roni, the San Francisco treat. Rice-a-roni, all in one package. Rice, vermicelli, and this fabulous flavor package. Rice-a-roni, the flavor can't be beat. Brown the rice and vermicelli, add hot water and saute. One pan, no boiling, cooking ease. A flavor that is sure to please. In minutes, a flavorful change from potato. Rice-a-roni, the San Francisco treat. You know, you don't have to be inside a bank to do most of your regular banking. You can do it all easily and conveniently with Commerce Instant Teller. And if you want, outside of regular banking hours, you can make deposits, withdraw cash, transfer funds, even pay many bills. In fact, Instant Teller can do almost anything except talk. And you forgot your card. What are you waiting for? Apply for Instant Teller today. You can count on the Commerce. 
A special highlight to the Blue Jays opening weekend will be this Sunday, April the 10th, when the Blue Jays host the New York Yankees at 1.30. On this day, each fan entering the stadium will receive a free Blue Jays gift certificate. Good for an $8.50 field-level chair for any future 1983 home game for which field-level chairs are available. Limit one per person, that's right, a free field-level chair for any future game, no matter what price ticket you purchase. His voice has gotten better, but he's just about as ugly as he was I, last year. I thought that was Ed McMahon <laughs> making a pitch for a minute there. Very impressive for him. Tony Armas is the Boston hitter with a 1-1 count. Then Yastrzemski, then Stapleton. Armas had a fielder's choice and what Tony thought should have been a base hit. And this one gloved by the pitcher Roy Lee Jackson, the lob to Umshaw for a quick first out. Four in a row retired now by Roy Lee. Opening day in Toronto, the Honorable John Ayer, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, will toss the ceremonial first pitch. And the Good Brothers, Canada's foremost country recording artist, will sing the anthem. There's a six successive Juno Awards, the top country music group in Canada. Yes, Dremsky, who is hitless so far today and has failed to hit safely in only four of his 22 opening day games for the Boston Red Sox. Gems at back foul, strike two, a ball and two strikes to Yaz. Stapleton is on deck. Yastrzemski's, uh, well, he takes about three or four pages up at the media guide. At least. His standings in various career stats, in I don't know how many categories, about two dozen, are just incredible. Games played, he's second to Henry Aaron. Bats third to Aaron. Runs. 13. Misses. The numbers are just incredible. Hit by. be able almost to collect start collecting his major league pension if he should elect the day he retires actually be about a year shy of it. and he never stops adjusting remember when he first came up as a kid he held his hands way up above his head then he brought him down into that leading power of pizza stands this year he got a tip from ted williams who's a hitting instructor down in spring training in winter haven Williams said, the older I got, the quicker my hips had to become. So what did Yaz do? Spent all winter long throwing to his young son, Mike, or Mike throw to him, turning his hips on the fastball. It comes to center fielder Lloyd Mosby in for it, so it appears that Yaz will go hitless for the fifth time in his career in terms of opening days. Two gone. Stremski 0 for 3 and a walk today. Dave Stapleton, his home run, the only bright spot for Boston back in the sixth inning to lead it off. Don, to me, the bullpen and that man's improvement this year will determine where this ball club is going to finish. If he can put the numbers on the board, or even a shade of his potential, say 20 home runs, 70 RBI, 270 batting on, that's not expecting a lot from Lloyd. It's expecting a lot over what he did the first three years. But for his potential, it's not. But it should be attainable. If he, if he does that, and they can move him down that lineup to get some RBIs. No uh, telling what the Blue Jays can do. Here's Collins tracking over from left field, and he'll make the play directly in front of Lloyd Mosby. So Royley Jackson, very impressive. Six straight batters, he's retired. Eight complete, seven one Blue Jays. And this is LeBatch, Blue Jays baseball on CTV. gave you all the great ingredients that go into Quaker Harvest Crunch and asked you to duplicate our recipe, you'd have quite a problem. Would you put in a cup of road oats or more or less? Dates and raisins, how many of each? A half a cup of honey or a tablespoon? Almonds, five or 25? Actually, the combinations and permutations are virtually endless. That's why for years we've been saying or singing, Quaker got the recipe that everyone else missed. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, presenting the all-new 46th edition of the entertainment giant, Garden Brothers Circus. 
This complete entertainment production is yours to enjoy as Garden Brothers Circus presents a spectacular extravaganza featuring throngs of thrilling animals, suspenseful aerial artists, side-splitting circus clowns, glittering production numbers, fabulous feature performers, and much, much more. Garden Brothers Circus, Kitchener Auditorium, this weekend, London Gardens, April 15, 16, and 17. House cleaning, but I've got all the help I need right here. Left Oil solves problems some cleaners have trouble with and makes it seem easy. Abrasives can scratch. All-purpose Lest Oil glides through the whole bathroom so it shines. You know Lest Oil's got muscle. Put it to work on tough laundry stains. Can your cleaner do that? In fact, all the cleaning help you need is right here. It's so easy when you use less Oil. Third pitcher of the day for the Red Sox, John Henry Johnson. Left-hander warming now to catcher Rich Gedman. Blue Jays in the ninth inning with Mosby, Mononex, and Griffin. And let's join Fergie now with Lloyd Mosby. Lloyd Mosby, sportscasters and sports writers have been saying in the offseason, if Lloyd Mosby has a good year, the Blue Jays will have a good year. Once again, Lloyd, more pressure on your shoulders. Well, Fergie, I think Fred has followed me all the way, you know, all the way to my career. Uh, Back in 78, when I signed as a first rounder, everyone chose me to be the man to carry the Blue Jays. But I think I'm the kind of man that want to be a team ball player. I know I can do the job. Uh, of course, if I do the job that I can do, then the Blue Jays will be in a better position. Mosby one for three. He had a single of the sixth inning. Takes a strike here. He struck out twice. Here is Johnson, the pitcher, his story as we look at Lloyd. Johnson started his career in the Oakland A's organization, pitched for Texas up with some arm problems, some shoulder problems. Red Sox picked him up. Spent the season at Pawtucket last year and look out. Deflected the shortstop and that made the play possible off the glove of John, uh, Johnson, the pitcher. It's one of those deals where unfortunately for Mosby, he's a left-handed pitcher. If his gloves on the other hand, he doesn't get a piece of it. One, six, three. One gone. Rance Mullenix has done it all today. Two run homer, but hit by a pitch, hit to do a double play. Takes outside and low for ball one. Had a chance this spring training, as I know you did, Don, to see what many people feel is the third baseman of the future for the Blue Jays, Jeff Reynolds. Jeff Reynolds. Uh, he is not too far away, folks. Got a little pop, handles the glove pretty well, with a few home runs. I'll tell you somebody else who isn't far away is that Mitch Webster. Very impressive in spring training. Ronald X is gone. Well, I think wow. it's interesting. I talked to the general manager, Tex Simone, of the Syracuse ball club, the Blue Jays AAA ball club, and he said, finally, he breathed a sigh of release just about a week ago and said, some of the talent, the fountain is bubbling over. He said, we're going to have a heck of a ball club at Syracuse this year. He said, we're really looking forward to it. You can put an infield out there that they've got. Fernandez and Manrique and Reynolds, Petrelli catching. Webster some in the young, outfield. Some young pitchers. So this is the first time we've been optimistic. So the organization is going in the right direction under Mr. Hardy and Pat Gillick, Paul Beeston. Year seven. And they're off to a great start here. This afternoon to begin the 83 season, leading the Red Sox 7-1 to one here in the top of the ninth inning. Griffin hitting with a strike and a ball. Two away, nobody on base. right now I think we're in agreement that Willie Upshaw will be the Toronto Blue Jays Labatt's player of this game. Home run in the third single drove home two runs in the fifth. Made a couple of smart unassisted plays at first base showing his hustle. Well he's one guy who gets worn down by spring training. He told me last week I can't wait until it's over. Next feelings of being a little tired of preseason plus the anxiety start the 83 season. In fact, as we said, the Blue Jays all came out early today. They were raring to go, and it's showing up on the scoreboard for their desire. Show you what a catcher goes through. Uh -huh. Next pitch. Hit down to Valdez in one hop, and Griffin is gone. He's had an 0 for 4 opening day. The Blue Jays gone on the ninth inning, too. Last chance Red Sox coming up. This is Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Two cars identical in every respect. Should the owners of these two cars pay identical premiums? I represent the private insurance companies operating in Canada. 
Because these companies compete against each other, setting premiums is one of the most important things they do. It's not a simple task. Take our two identical cars, for instance. Let's put one in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan has only 7.5 vehicles per mile of road. And one in Ontario. Ontario has 35.4 vehicles per mile of road. This difference in density of cars has to affect the insurance costs in these areas. Where you do your driving is just one of the factors that affects your premium. Others include the driving record of the owner, his age, the kind of driving done, and many more. It is by weighing all these factors that your private insurance company comes up with your premium. General insurance companies have brought you this message because they want you to know how private car insurance works. OJ's charge line is worth noting. You can use your Visa or MasterCard to order tickets for any 83 home game. You call the Blue Jays charge line with the number you see there. If you don't have your tickets for opening weekend, why not call right now and place that order? Blue Jays charge line, 416-595-1362. And, of course, it all begins Saturday at 1.30 with the Yankees in town for opening day. You know, Don, when we look at our scorecards, uh, anytime you come to Fenway Park, you think of the left field wall, which you featured earlier in the telecast, and you think, well, those right-handed hitters are going to tattoo it. Looking down the Blue Jays, seven runs that they've got, all seven runs have been driven in by left-handed hitters. Yes. Witt got two. Mullick's got two. Upshaw has the other three. This ball so interesting and unexpected. Royley Jackson facing Gedman here. He's retired six in a row since coming on for Dave Steve to begin the seventh inning. And now has to contend only with a 7-8-9 spot in the Boston lineup to protect a 6-run, 7-1 Toronto lead as the Jays reach out for victory number one. It's interesting. I saw Clyde King, who everybody thought was going to be the manager of the Yankees this year until George Steinbrenner talked about getting Billy Martin back and then did. But King was scouting in Dunedin, training camp in Toronto, and he really likes Royley Jackson. He said, I always have liked him. He said he's always had the problem in the past getting behind hitters walking more than he strikes out. He said, but I looked at his stats after last year. He said he is on the verge of becoming an outstanding short relief pitcher. And that's a super scout's opinion, a former major league manager. Edmund strokes that to right field. Tracking back is Barfield. And what a play by Jesse out there as he had to react quickly to that ball. Got he, a late start on it. He almost nonchalant on that one. He got fooled on it. The ball just kept carrying. Gedman is awfully strong. And then when Jesse started jogging back, he was playing very shallow in this very deep right field. Just got there. That's the first real nice, hard shot nice, off Jackson today. Nice recovery by Jesse Barfield. Here's the shortstop, Glenn Hoffman. He is one for three. Outside. Early Jackson came to the Blue Jays from the New York Mets, who today won their home opener over the Phillies, two to nothing. Not sure if Steve Carlton got the loss or not, but he and Seaver were locked in a duel scoreless through six innings. Seaver was a doubtful starter. In fact, he missed his last turn or two in spring training. Jogged to the side and said he could open. Inside by Roy Lee to Hoffman. It's two and one. One out, nobody on. Jackson and the Jays, two outs away from winning this one. Yeah, we'll probably see a pinch hitter from Valdez, a number nine hitter for Ralph Hout after Hoffman. Jack swing foul. Two and two. If you read Nichols, the young man they're so high on, he could probably play any place else if it weren't for the outfield the Red Sox have right now. May be the best defensive outfielder the Red Sox have. Same goes for Rick Miller, who was He's a regular. Exception. Wow. Ah, two kids. Hit, made it out of the field. <laughs> That's great. Uh -huh. And they got the baseball. Now, this is going to be interesting. The two kids ran out, had a race for the ball. The smallest of the two got it. And according to the rules, some rough attendant supposed to come over and either throw him out of the ballpark. Look at the father. If that was the father, he pulled his cap down. He was a little bit embarrassed. Huh. They're going to boo the attendant if he tries to pick the ball from him. Boo him. <laughs> he won't stand a chance. Uh, <laughs> no attendant uh, making a move in that direction this way. Full count from Jackson to Hoffman. One out of the ninth inning. Auto ahead, 7-1 on nine hits. The Red Sox have three. He Strike got called, and Jackson gets his second strikeout since coming on and has retired his eighth batter in a row. 
Nichols will hit in Valdez number nine spot. Here's the pitch that took care of Glenn Hoffman. Just on the corner. Oh, nice jerk job, Ernie. He brought that ball in just nicely. Uh, what will happen now with the American League umpires who have gone to the inside protect almost exclusively except for a few the old timers who are left. They're, they're umpiring the inside corner and they will give a pitcher with control the outside part of the plate. You can't see it quite as well. He throws a strike to the pinch hitter Reed Nichols hitting for Valdez. He's a guy who absolutely killed Seattle last year. A bunch of home runs off him. Reed Nichols. In fact, one of the best relievers in the game last year, Bill Caudle. He two home runs off him to beat in ball games. A lot of depth on this Boston team off the bench. Very little depth in their starting pitching staff. I would think they're going to make a trade before June 15th to try and get a little bit more stability in their starting staff. It's easier said than done. Everybody would like to have more starting pitching, wouldn't they? Well, maybe except the team we're looking at right now, the Toronto Blue Jays. And the White Sox seem to have an abundance. And if Baltimore's healthy, they've got enough. There's the appeal, and the first base umpire ends the ball game. Eccles strikes out. Jackson retired nine straight, including three strikeouts. In tremendous relief support of Dave Steed. It's a three-hitter for Steed, who will get the win, the save. Uh, Roy Jackson wouldn't qualify for. The game wasn't that close, but what a tremendous job he did. Breaking ball. That was a ball, and he did not go far enough around on. However, first base up by Dale Ford says he does. Let's get it over with. Oily threw 34 very effective pitches, only allowing three out of the outfield. Only one was really hit hard. Well, so we saw strong starting pitching from the Sporting News Pitcher of the Year, Dave Steed, a strong relief job, key hitting by Ernie Witt, Rance Mulnix, and Willie Upshaw. And a couple of near fights. Near? Brushbacks yeah. from Eckersley, and then Steve hitting Jim Rice, and both benches clearing. It was a very, very interesting day, and the Blue Jays start off on the right foot after 15 and 10 spring training. Here's the one to Jimmy Rice. After Eckersley had been warned and has had Bobby Cox, Dave Steve went one ball and two strikes on Jim Rice and then nicked him on the left shoulder. Here and comes here Jim. comes Rice, one of the strongest men in the game, says, all right. Ernie went out in a hurry. Both benches are erupting right here, coming out. The umpires, look at Ken Kaiser. The umpires react very quickly. Larry Barnett and Ken Kaiser coming in from second base just hogtied Jim Rice and prevented a fight from starting. The human wall of China, Ken look, Kaiser. Look at that. Three base hit. Stapleton a home run into the screen leading off. The sixth inning, the only Red Sox run. So, what do you say about the Blue Jays? As that man finished it off, Riley Jackson. We'll be back. This is Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on CTV. Winter darkness of January 1973, it brought disaster. Just beyond the town's edge, a fissure cracked the earth, abruptly spewing molten lava and ash hundreds of feet into the air. The National Geographic Society presents Born of Fire, Wednesday at 7 on CKCO-TV. Three numbers. Oh, that's five dollars. 
You did win. Oh, my goodness. I had quite a few winners last week. Really? Oh, and here's something. It says that every week, about 100,000 people in Ontario win a cash prize for only a dollar. Well, I'm going to play an extra ticket. I want your favorite number. 39. That's right. <laughs> I told you this was fun. <laughs> at Boston's Fenway Park, and with us, Willie Upshaw, the Labatt player of the game. Willie, a home run, a single, three RBIs. You know something? Uh, I looked at your stats in spring training. I saw you down there. I didn't think you had a particularly good spring training, but here today, you look like you're in mid-season form swinging that bat. Well, that's right, Fergie. I didn't have a real good spring training. Uh, basically, I didn't play too much. You know, I was just trying to get my game together. I was swinging at different pitches. But uh, about the last three days of spring training, I really uh, got my game together. And today, you know, it just it all came to me. You didn't have any pressure on you in spring training like you have had in the past. You know, when you had Mayberry pressing you for the job at first base, or actually you were pressing him. Yeah, you know, that's right. I was real relaxed this spring for a change. And, you know, I, I knew that I was going to get to play this year. And, you know, it made a difference. And uh, when the season starts, you know, I knew I'd be ready, and I'm just happy it turned out good today. Bobby Cox said in spring training defensively that you're as good as any first baseman in baseball, if not the best. Does that put a little pressure on you, Willie, when he makes a statement like that? Oh, well, not at all. Uh, you know, as long as I have DeMasso over there helping me out, you know, there's not too many balls going to get to that infield. Uh, you know, I got good speed, so I got a chance to play deep and cut off a lot of balls that would uh, be base hits otherwise. Tell me about your weight program. I know a lot of the guys went on a weight program uh, in the offseason. What about you, Willie? Well, for me, uh, I tried to put on weight. Uh, they wanted me to come in a little heavier, about 190, but it just didn't work out. I played a lot of racquetball, but... I went to spring training, and I took a lot of vitamins, and they really helped, and it helped me keep my weight up to about 185 where I'm at now. That's what I like to play at. You know, uh, spending about three weeks in spring training myself, I have never seen it on a Blue Jay club. The spirit, uh, the optimism that's here, uh, right to the man. You can sense it in the dressing room. You could sense it really at spring training, and it really has carried over. Oh, yes. You know, last year we came off a, a good, fine season, especially the latter part of the season. And it just carried over, you know. We're all young, and we had a year together. And this year, we just feel like, you know, we can do anything, you know. Once right. we uh, get a couple of games and win a couple of games, you know, no telling how far we'll go. Willie, thank you very much. Congratulations for being thank named you, the Labatt's player of the game. Let's call in pitcher Dave Steeb. You know, uh, Dave, of course, the winning pitcher here today, uh, he gave up uh, only three base hits in the ball game. And Dave... Uh, uh, I can remember watching you the first day of spring training, and Ernie Witt and I were standing there. You were throwing batting practice, and, and Witt says you're ready to pitch right today. Uh, uh, you, you, but you really weren't that sharp today, although you did pitch not too bad. Uh, you're right, Fergie. I felt really strong. Uh, I was really uh, nervous about today. I wanted to get that first one out of the way, and uh, I was really curious as how I'd feel. I felt great in the bullpen. and everything was working good. When I came out there, uh, first inning, things were okay, but then I started trying to throw a little too hard. I felt a little too good. And, start getting behind, getting out of control. and I thought you were trying to overpower the hitters the first couple of innings. Yeah, I was. I was trying to throw a fastball too hard, try to throw a better slider than the last one type of thing, and luckily Al told me to calm down a little bit and keep my arm on top, and I was able to get out of it. Now, the question everybody is waiting uh, for you to answer, did you intentionally throw at Jim Rice? Of course not. <laughs> no, all, out of all honesty, I did not try to throw at him. I was, I was wild then. all day. Well, uh, we're, we're looking at it right now, Dave. I don't know if you can see it on the monitor. You did brush him back. Uh, you know, uh, Tony and Don and I discussed it upstairs, and the count uh, maybe made us think that you might have thrown at him the fact that it was uh, two strikes on him and one ball, and you could waste the pitch. Uh, I had no idea what the count was after the incident, but uh, no, I was just trying to come in with it, and it kind of got away from me. Uh, he almost got away, but Ernie and I didn't even think it hit him, and then we kind of thought it hit the bat maybe, but he got the base. And he was a little hesitant to come out to the mound. I mean, he started out, he stopped, and then... Uh, he sort of got some help to hold him back. I know Ernie jumped right there in front of him. Yeah, I was um, grateful to Ernie, too. But, <laughs> no, that's, I, don't, I didn't think he was too upset as a result of it. I thought that he was maybe putting on a little act to try and maybe get, shake me up a little bit and mess up my control a little more than it was. Do you think an incident like this will carry over into the season? I mean, do you think Rice will forget that incident today, or uh, will he remember it somewhere down the road? Uh, I don't know. I, I think the type of guy he is, I think, I think he's just a little frustrated from, you know, them losing, being uh, down by a few runs and plus him not having any hits yet, maybe. I don't think it's something that uh, he'll bring up again. Dave, you were missing. Uh, I haven't seen you. Like, I know you gave up three base hits, uh, and any pitcher would be proud of that. But uh, 
before you went to uh, a three and two and a lot of hitters. You threw a lot of pitches, 107 pitches by the sixth inning, and you don't do that normally. No, I don't. Like I, like I said, for a guy, just I felt really good, felt strong, and I wanted to throw the ball a little harder, and I was getting behind a lot, and then I'd try to pick a corner and it'd just be outside a little too much, so I finally just started coming in, making sure I threw strikes and hoping they hit the ball at somebody. Any way you look at it, it's a win, and of course the Blue Jays, uh, it's a win. Nice way to start it off. Dave, you felt it in spring training. I know we talked about it there, about the, the attitude, the spirit on this ball club. It's great. Uh, I was excited and, and very anxious to see the first game and see how everybody react. And it was just a uh, total team effort. Even the bench, just everybody was so excited. And, and as the game went on, it, it got even more intense. And I, I love it. It's just a very good start for us. You made a statement uh, a year ago that uh, maybe uh, you wanted to play for a contender. And, and you know, all the contract talks, of course, and negotiations are behind you. But now, yes, sir, you are on a contender. Yeah, I'm very happy here. And I, I feel I am playing for a contender. All right, we're looking forward to a great season. And you know what else we're looking for? The Cy Young Award. Well, I'm sure trying for it. All right, Dave Steve of the Toronto Blue Jays. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jay Baseball on CTV. <laughs> Energy Ontario presents the conserving car and the non-conserving car. The conserving car avoids gas gobbling jackrabbit starts. It accelerates sensibly to hit all the green lights. The tires are always right for the season and are always properly inflated. The conserving car does not have bulky roof racks. And the conserving car participates in carpools and always gets maximum mileage. The conserving car. The energy it saves today is energy we can all use tomorrow. Who has time to move money between accounts? I have a Commerce Combination account. High daily interest, no charge checking. What a combination. Commerce Senior Services give me special things, like bonus interest. For new and convenient ways of managing your money, count on the Commerce. You can count on the Commerce. Well, it was a good start for the Toronto Blue Jays, and uh, clarify a couple of things while we have a moment, Tony. First of all, I don't think either of us thought that uh, Mr. Steve was throwing at Mr. Rice earlier, and secondly, Roy Lee Jackson was given the save on the basis of having pitched three effective innings, and effective indeed they were. He got everybody out. Well, I think an interesting statement that Dave made, and it shows, I think, what he is all about at this point in his career, and the Blue Jays, uh, when he did not have his good stuff, and yet he still made the pitches when he had to and only gave up one run. And when you can do that, you're on the verge of greatness as a pitcher. One game does not a season make, Don, but what else could the Blue Jays do? Timely hitting. They got them when they needed them. Steve made the pitches when he had to. Very efficient offense, obviously. They just stranded just two men. So uh, where they're going to finish, who knows? Off one game, you can't tell. But they're on the verge of being 500-plus ball club. You know it. And the Yankees will be in on Saturday. And so... On behalf of the Bats, Blue Jays baseball and CTV, Don Chevrier saying so long from Boston. Blue Jays baseball is a special presentation on CTV Sports. Produced in association with TV Labatt and is protected by copyright. Any use of this broadcast without permission is prohibited. The final score, Toronto beating Boston 7-1. Dave Steve, the winning pitcher. Labatt's player of the game, Willie Upshaw. Our next telecast at 1.30 on Saturday, April the 9th. The New York Yankees at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. Check your local listings.
with cars, a little problem can lead to big trouble if it isn't discovered in time. That's why golf dealers are...